Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. This episode we're going to be talking about the Batman team up set, the X-Men Gala, the Hero Clicks for Huntington's event, and some Gen Con news. This is episode 413. I'm your sexy ranch and co-host Calderness. Already said that, don't worry about it. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Hero Clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred instant deadpan humor. Oh, how many six yeah. people think I am funny? It's the hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clips like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Google, back some more. Let's attack him because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. I like for sure. Clicks is brought to you in part by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all these Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. Say hi to the people, Simeon Bruce. Yo, if you hear some rustling in the background, apparently my cat found some bubble wrap. And so, yeah, that's what's what? going on. Bubble wrap in your house, a house that buys a hero clicks house. Hero clicks, a hero clicks house has bubble wrap in it. No, so I don't know how much editing I'm gonna do. I did uh, do my last time we were on the episode. Last episode, we talked about uh, chasing that venom magneto. So I did unbox and record. Oh, you're right. Uh, two cases being opened, um, like long dead for spoilers. So it's mostly just for the people that like want to see. Um, and then I, you know, I also filmed some other things, but all my boosters, like, so I sorted everything, all my boosters are on the ground. I keep finding like some rares and super rares just like upstairs. And so my cat oh. is like grabbing them out of the boosters and hauling them upstairs and then just leaving them places. Yeah. Got to start them young with this game. That's for sure. She's only, uh, yeah. like 11 months, but you know, that means I've got 14 years or uh, 13 years, let's say, to beat I Isaac Arnold Berkowitz's record for youngest True. hero clicks player, True. world champ hero. He's already catching on I mean. pretty fast, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All she's right. already distinguished yeah. what rarities are best to grab. Yeah. So that's yeah, great. already grabbing the rares and super rares, not wasting her time with those petty commons and uncommons, kind of mm -hmm. like her owner. So that, <laughs> that's pretty good. Like only playing the prince format. Raise your kids right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh. Gosh. Uh, all right, Simeon. Like every week, we like to start with what made us happy this week. What made you happy, my man? This week, what made me happy? Um, so I participated in the Hero Clicks for Huntington's uh, Battle Royales online. And oh, yeah. so that was pretty cool. Also, I, I got home on Friday. That was really nice. Uh, obviously, the drive, the 10 and a half hour drive was not super nice. But the part where I got home and finally got to like see my dog and cat who is still at the as we speak stealing some clicks off my table um i got to see those two things again so that was nice i say with bitterness in my voice because i want yeah. to kick my cat right now just kidding <laughs> i don't kick cats but i will punt one it's different it's, yeah, it's totally different Sport. yeah they, they ball up and become like hard like a like yeah. a leather bound football and they soar through yeah. the air perfectly no um it was really nice. I had a long, exhausting week last week. It was, I did not do, and I mean, some people like are workaholics, so please don't tell me how you work 80 hours a week or whatever. I don't typically work very like long weeks. It's normally a standard 40 and I've gotten very used to that. And so I did a like 66 hour week somewhere oh. about, and two of those days were 10 plus hour drives uh, from <laughs> nebraska to indiana so it was just a really long week and finally getting home and being able to relax and then saturday doing a bunch of brs and hanging out with people it was nice it was nice to relax and just do some uh you know stuff i don't have to think about like hero clicks where you don't have to think to play you just point and click you know true you don't you don't have to be smart at all to play this game we learned that this weekend didn't we yeah, so anyways, uh, nah, Simeon, that's awesome. I was not able to do any of the Battle Royale, so I was pretty jealous of you guys. Uh, you're having a fun time playing Battle Royales and stuff. 
uh, couldn't make it work. Busy schedule. So while Simeon was having a much harder work week than he typically has, I was on vacation. Uh, I went to Nashville this wow. week. It's what made me. It's what made me happy this week. Uh, it was a great time. Um, the, the reason I went was flights to Nashville were an eighty dollar round trip. Dang, on Allegiant. that's pretty. So yeah. I was like, can't afford not to go. Uh, yeah, they're practically I paid, paying you to go. Right? Yeah. And until I have to pay for Ubers the whole time. And um, I pay as much Ubering around as I do for the flights, both flights. By that, I yeah. mean so, way more. <laughs> I had a single ride in Nashville. Um, I can't remember what they call their little, like, uh, like bull, not Boulevard Street. Uh, oh, Broadway. Broad, yeah, their, their Broadway, Broadway Street. Yeah. I was down on Broadway one night obviously didn't have a car i'm not from there i didn't drive there um and regardless of that i had been drinking so i grabbed an uber 80 dollar drive back to the oh. place yeah that one uber was 80 dollars, and that wasn't even i think that was just like to get the ride i don't even think that was including a tip or anything oh, i was like insane. yikes okay so i never paid an 80 dollar ride i think the most i had was like a 30 dollar ride but you know going around it just kept you know adding up but uh nah, we had a really fun time uh went to a lot of stuff however because i was in full penny pincher mode with how cheap the trip was to do uh instead of being like well i saved there so let's splurge here i was like nah 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 we're gonna make this as cheap as possible uh so didn't go into any of the museums didn't go into the grand Ole opry didn't go see a show there uh because that all cost money simeon uh, so what I did do was walk around everything that I could have basically just kind of sightseed. Uh, although the best best thing we did, though, in Nashville, and I would highly recommend this. This is what made me the happiest that week. Um, before I say the thing that was the coolest, real quick, Parthenon's a waste of money. The Parthenon was pretty lame, not going to lie. Maybe if you're super into, like, the Roman architecture, Greek mythology stuff, but, like, Athena is hideous. She be looking like a ratchet skank in that Parthenon. No offense, of course, but like sculptor wasn't doing her any favors. She kind of ugly, though. Uh, would not see it again. She looked way prettier in like the Percy Jackson movie when she was like all gold or whatever. Uh, I personally, Parthenon, waste of money. Um, it was only 10 bucks to get inside, but still, you know, not great. She was pretty. She was pretty hideous looking. I thought it was a Medusa statue at first. Not gonna it lie, it's kind of. It's rough. How old is it? Is it eighteen something? I don't know, dude. Nasty looking. Uh, but coolest thing we did was we went to this place called the Game Terminal. Uh, it is hundred, like almost like two hundred pinball machines, classic arcade machines, uh, and some other like more modern ones where it's like car racing arcade machines. But they also had like. Uh, shuffleboard and ping pong and like uh, cornhole all that jazz outside so it was like they had video games inside pinball inside outside they had some outdoor games and it was free to get into if you're over 21 so i'm like boom instantly free to get into and then all the machines except for pinball and a few other ones were also all free so like they had Captain America and the Avengers. They had Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. They had Mario. They had, you know, like Pac-Man. All those, like, classic arcade machines they had there. Um, and they were all free to play. So, you know, I'd never beat Captain America and the Avengers before. So I was like, honey, we are, uh, we will be playing this since it is free to play. And it will cost us nothing no matter how many times we die. So you can kind of play kind of bad, which is, I think, fun to me. Um, not having to try that hard. But other people, maybe not. But, um... So, like, it's free to get into. It's free to play all the games. So if you want to drink or buy food there, you can. If not, it's all free, baby. You just robbed these people, and you had a great time. I was like, that's my kind of business, right? I didn't buy anything there. Uh, she wanted to get, like, food or whatever. Fine, that's okay. But, like, I was like, yeah, I'm taking these people for all they're worth. Oh, yeah. Um, so I was, I was all for it, man. Uh, best game they had though was a game that's not even like a like digital computery whatever game. It's this game called Ice Cold Beer. Simeon, do you know this game? No. This is the only time in my life I've ever enjoyed an ice cold beer. Uh, and this game is it's really weird, hard to explain. But the back wall of it is got these little holes. It looks like Swiss cheese punched in the back wall. 
at each level of the game, there is a hole you have to get into. And slowly, the holes that like have a little flashing bulb in them uh, get higher and higher, and that's what you need to get the little metal ball into. What you have are two little joysticks, and you have a, a metal bar that goes across the screen. And the joysticks control up and down on each side. So you're moving it either, you know, both up, both down, or up and down, or whatever, just to level out this little metal bar that the little metal ball rolls around on. You're trying to dodge holes that aren't lit up and get them into the holes that specifically are lit up. That was one of the most fun games I've played. I mean, I probably played that game for like just a solid hour. <laughs> it was so it was so addicting. It was so awesome. I was gonna There's say ten I think levels we've all you get played, into. Like as kids, you've played like the handheld version or like something similar yeah to that. something like that yeah um one of like the little puzzle ones with like a little uh ball bearing kind of thing yeah sure but dude it, it was in a, it was a crazy addicting game it was a super fun time i game terminal it wins for me we tried to do some honky tonking we were just like looking out over the city over broadway we had all like the bars and all the live music i was like man this is just beautiful like all the music is beautiful and uh person i was with she was like you know, the only reason you think the music is beautiful is because it's country music. And I'm like, you're darn right. If it was like rap music or pop music, I'd be like, yeah, it's kind of noisy tonight, you know. But because it was that good old country, I was like, this is beautiful. What a beautiful evening. Uh, but yeah, no. National trip. I've talked about it enough, but it was it was awesome. It, it just goes to show you, you don't have to like pay to go see everything. You can just have. Oh, and we tried some Nashville hot chicken, too. Oh, Plus yeah. Two you different got restaurants to. for that. That was good. That was really, really good. I'm not a hot food guy. I also went to Shake Shack for the first time. Also really good. <laughs> also really, really Best good. Best shake you've ever had? No. Uh, okay, so another side tangent. If you make a chocolate shake by just grinding up chocolate ice cream, that is an <laughs> abomination to my taste buds. It is disgusting, and you are disgusting. That is <laughs> not a chocolate shake. The way you make a chocolate shake, that's how they made their chocolate shake. Their cookies and cream shake was great. It was delicious. That's how they made their chocolate shake. But when I get back to South Dakota, I'm like, honey, we have to go to Culver's right now, and we have to get a real chocolate shake. I go to Culver's, I order a chocolate shake, and I say, wait, ma'am, really quickly, how do you make your shakes here? And she says, I take vanilla ice cream, some milk, and then uh, flavored it with chocolate syrup mix. I'm like, yes, thank you. God bless you, ma'am. That is perfect. That is how you make a chocolate shake. You make chocolate syrup with vanilla ice cream, and it is a symphony, a beautifully mixed symphony of chocolate it is not this disgusting lazy man's oh it's all blended up now it's a shake no shut up don't disrespect my taste buds like that ever again anyways wow. yes did not realize that was yeah such a loaded question i gave you i there. i take all right i'm sorry take I your shake seriously I, yeah very seriously they are my favorite form of ice cream they're the best uh that's enough about what made us happy that was a little long-winded and i apologize uh, also, really quick, negative on the people that run Hero Clicks in Nashville. You had it on Friday nights. That's what Rainbow mm. does, and then that's when I had to fly out, so I couldn't play any Hero Clicks in Nashville, which is a little bit of a bummer. I didn't try uh, and play any Hero Clicks when yeah. I was in Nashville, but yeah, no. it is it is a fun little destination spot. It is surprisingly cheap to go to because it's a huge hub. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and there's there's tons of stuff to do there. So, yeah. Hey, let's jump into the news. Simeon, you know that, that funny little image of Scooby Doo Doo, Batman, and some Teen Titans Go people that popped up a few weeks ago from Gamma? Well, now. Oh, you mean the Teen Titans got... Go set? I can't yeah, believe dude, they're making a the Teen Titans, Titans Go set. Oh, dare they? Rabble, rabble, rabble. Yeah. I don't like this thing. Uh, no, it's actually the world's greatest detective, aka the DC Comics Hero Clicks Batman Team Up set. Um,. Complete it's kind of cool. So team up cards, perhaps. Uh, oh, maybe. Yeah. So it turns out the Teen Titans Go and the Scooby Gang are sub themes to a different set. What? A set what? that has a sub theme? Oh my gosh! Maybe Save we should wait so. until people give us more information before we make decisions, like how we should yell about Teen Titans Go. Crazy. Um, they are part of like a the miniatures game though, so there is that. So people people can still be uh, mad about the starter set or whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, you can be. Um, it's like the cool thing is, it looks like there's like the main three sub themes are going to be Teen Titans. It just says Teen Titans. 
obviously we have only seen Teen Titans Go sculpts, but I assume there's going to be OG Titans because they also appeared in Teen Titans Go. I think there's a movie, so they should be fine. So Teen Titans, Lantern Corps, and Mystery Inc. Uh, five figure. I'm just going to read the solicit here really quickly. The five figure booster release features characters from famous. Characters famous for putting their minds together to crack tough cages. cases, such as Batman, Robin, Velma, Scooby-Doo, and more. Put their de- detective skills to work, gather clues, and solve the all-new mystery cards. Earn bonuses for more your team. More cards. Ooh. Yes. Even more cards. <laughs> Tarot cards, team-up cards, mystery cards, legacy cards. Give me those cards, baby. <laughs> uh, harness the power of the Lantern Corps with characters like Green Lantern. So, you know, Green Lantern. That could be any number of people quite, but thank you yeah, uh, quite literally a whole core of yeah. people to uh, choose from although however larflees dexstar and fatality use lantern rings to create powerful lantern constructs to use on your hero Clicks team so interesting that it's not just a construct trait anymore potentially and now there's lantern rings we've added to yeah. the mix how curious so now we got lantern rings constructs and mystery cards also in the boosters but simian that's not all I mean, our friends will have their hands full with the return of many iconic villains in the set, including Scarecrow, Mr. Freeze, Bane, and Sinestro. I don't think any of these characters are modern right now, so that's good. They no, all yeah, rotated that's... out with the last Batman's animated Batman set, animated so that's cool. Would have been when most of them were there. Uh, oh, Sinestro have was them back. in Wonder Woman 80, but... Oh, oh yeah, he but this, is, this will be Core, yellow. Yeah, yeah, this will be yellow Sinestro, I assume, villainy. Uh, Add more characters with the Rally ability to your roster. The first DC set with Rally, right? So that's cool. Yeah. Um, this is the crazy thing. Uh, with more than 120 figures and objects to collect, this is going to be one of the biggest and most exciting Hero Clicks releases ever. So what is the set breakdown? We've got 17 common figures. We have 14 uncommon figures. We have 14 rare figures and two primes. 12 super rare figures and two primes. Eight chase figures, fifty-seven objects, That's uh, a big and five eight seven cards. Have yeah, we five, ever seven. had a set? And I, I know the answer is no, um, because when X of Swords came out and we saw twenty swords, we were like, "Whoa, twenty swords in a scene!" Yeah. And technically, that's split between, uh, like monthly like OP sets and the regular set. But 57 objects in a regular set. That's almost as many objects as there are figures. Which, like, man, those boosters are just going to be, like, popping out, right? They're going to be, like, stuffed to the brim with these objects. So let's let's look at these objects. What, what, what could they be? Um, I'm assuming if we're counting... I can't remember if the lantern constructs were counted as objects in DC Wonder Woman or not. I but don't... In their must solicit... Be. I don't know. There's solicit. I don't know. But uh, let's say if we have like a ton of Lantern Corps, and let's say they each like every instead of like how only the chases and then only for Rare Green Lantern came with them. Let's say every single Lantern figure, which I guess is only like two more for Wonder Woman, but whatever. Let's say every Lantern figure in this set, you know, has a construct. That could be quite a few. That could be you know? yeah, quite a few of the objects. And if every so, if every Lantern Corps is represented. That's nine cores, nine rings yeah. right there. Um, so already we have what? Yellow, green, orange, and red. Yeah, so we've already yeah, we've seen yellow. Larflees, so, we're assuming Sinestro, uh, Green yeah. Lantern, we've seen Dexstar, so we're missing Star Saf- Star Sapphire, um, Sapphire, Indigo Tribe or whatever, uh, yeah. Blue Lantern. I don't know if they got a special a little, name or not. Uh, and then, uh, of course, White and Black. Before. So not sure if White and Black will be represented, those are usually True. the, I don't know, they're they're less less represented. Obviously, so is like indigo and uh, orange. Orange we almost never see. Um, you see, I'm excited for orange because that's I one, a new Hal Jordan, a new Larflees, potentially uh, a Lex Luthor orange lantern. Pretty, yeah. Pretty cool. So yeah, but fifty-seven unique objects. One that's of them's got to be so. One of them's got to be a sandwich, right? Or Scooby Snacks. One of them has or, to be sandwich. I mean, maybe oh, both. Maybe Scooby Snacks. Maybe both. Maybe. Uh, uh, what What else is like a, a a thing they use a lot? So you're saying just big old sandwich, like Dagwood looking sandwich yeah. type thing, like, <laughs> like the, the cartoonishly the too large, cartoonishly for their head long, kind of like unhinge your jaw to open it or eat it. Yeah. Um, I feel like let's skip the batarang. Let's do like grappling hook instead. Yeah. That'd be cool. You know, do yeah for like more Batman. Of, well, and that's the thing, like. With 57 objects, um, 
if they are including constructs for each of these characters, uh, that could take like another like up to twenty. Who knows? Oh, but yeah, there's so sure, many right? objects left that you could do. You could redo the full like uh, Batman utility belt resource. Or like, what if they did relics. that though? What if it's like Batman like with Mandarin rings? You know what I mean? Where it's yeah. like there's you make that many Batman objects, right? But then there's a Batman who you pay three points to give him those objects. Sure. He chooses two each. Oh, that would be so sick. Three points should per, be that. per belt yeah. object. Yeah. Yeah, That'd make a Batman really cool. like the Mandarin. If, if a couple Batman dope. could do that. Um, yeah. yeah, you get the shark repellent, the grappling hook. Yeah. Obviously, the probably not the Suit of Sorrows or anything, but uh, no. those were cool. I mean, I liked the Batman, Robin, and Suit of Sorrows Openades, outfits. Whatever. Yeah, those outfits were fun. Uh, so really quick, we have some sculpts to look through. I'm just going to mention these because I also want to mention some more objects they might have. We have Scooby-Doo, we have Shaggy, we have Fred, we have, oh, man, the orange one, Velma. <laughs> the orange Velma. one. We, have, we see two Velmas. We see Velma standing there, and we see yeah. Velma running. We see yeah. Scooby running, and then also Scooby kind of sitting there. So we see the Mystery Kang, Mystery Inc. Uh, we see Robin, Teen Titans Go, Starfire, and Beast Boy all from Teen Titans Go. Man, their heads are big. Yeah, uh, we see a Batman. We see a oh man, Quadzilla Batman here. The legs oh, on this dude. This is, is insane. yeah. Uh, what is it like? Mark Miller's Batman kind of like okay. size of features. It's, yeah, huge. It's uh, yeah. We see a prison jumpsuit eye roll poison ivy, which is a really funny one. Uh, we see Bumblebee, uh, also Teen Titans Go version. We see Peacemaker. This I'm pretty pumped for. Uh, pretty dope getting Peacemaker. I'm excited for it. A little lame. He's holding like batons. That's yeah. It's not comic Peacemaker. It's comic Peacemaker. I, I mean, he does yeah. use both. I mean, Tons. obviously in the comics, it's not like he's um, not hurting people, but. Right. There's a couple issues where he's like running around beating people with basically little metal bats. Yeah, but man, he just wanted to have his Desert Eagle so bad. That's okay. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> looks looks great though. Looks great. Oh, it does. Uh, Larflees, Dexter. Who we've already seen Dexter before. It's a little Larflees little shame, but awesome. Looks Dexter. Good. So I'm torn because I I want the the like spewy Red Lantern mouth blood stuff oh yeah but at dude, the same time it would be like so like fragile on an already tiny fragile sculpt <laughs> but larfley's sculpt is just he's got that drip mm. going on where he's got like orange flame all over him. yeah dude i like it a and lot. he's holding the battery which is yep. it's great good. Larfley's pose. And speaking of like that little mouth blood i was like going through my my dc figures the other day and you know parts just break off that's just the way it happens with hero clicks and i was looking and i was like what is this little little piece? I was, I was like so confused. And then I'm like going through other stuff. I'm like, oh man, my atrocitus is missing his little mouth. Yeah. Blood bit. And I was like, oh, that's what it was. So like, I went back. Rage in, I vomit piece, or whatever you want to call it. it. Little rage blood. Yeah. Dude, I was like, oh man, it's hilarious. It's like just this last week. I was like, man, what is this little piece? And I'm like, oh yeah. It's a little broken off little, little mouth blood that you'd be spitting out <laughs> yeah. every time he's yelling and stuff. Yeah. I'm yeah, excited. That's thing. Um, I'm pumped for Lantern Objects. This is probably going to be a set. I've already bought all my Disney Plus stuff. Yeah. So now um, it's just it's now it's going to be saving up for this Batman set because I'm big Scooby-Doo guy, big, big Lantern Core guy. Tons of people are huge Lantern Core fans. Uh, and then it's like, you know what? All the Batman stuff I can just sort of sell. And keep yeah. Everything else. Well, you so know? just like with Wonder Woman 80th. And we've talked about it on the podcast a few times. Right. I want to do a video about it because I feel like this is something that newer players don't quite get. This already looks like a set that just has a ton of value in it. So not only are there 57 objects and eight chases, it's the return of lanterns that are iconic things that people just really... We haven't had a lantern-heavy set. We haven't had like a Dexstar or a Larflees since War of Light. That's almost yeah. seven years ago at this point. So these are like this is going to be a highly collectible oh, set for those kind of things. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some pieces that are duds. There's going to be some things that are duds. But then on top of that, you're also getting um, those mystery cards potentially, like whatever those do. You're getting uh, the. Uh, let's see, did they say legacy cards anywhere? I guess I don't think they, they did. did not mention legacy cards, which really sucks. So it's, it's mostly just the objects and then 
like uh, the collectability of like the characters, I guess. But this is like on par, I would say like almost on par with like a Wonder Woman 80th set where you get like as much value for the product that you purchase. Uh, like at least when you're buying then like bricks and cases kind of thing. Obviously, if you buy like a single booster and there's a rare and no object or something, that's not value. But no, like I think that this set might just hit enough of the collectability. It's definitely going to hit the collector portion. Um, it'll yeah. definitely hit the casual portion. Whether you're like, if you hate Scooby Doo, but you love Lantern Core, if you hate Teen Titans Go, but you like Scooby Doo, if you just want to get your hands on like a Peacemaker, it's going to hit those two parts of the Venn diagram easily. And then the competitive part, there's 57 objects. Like we said with X of Swords, there's bound to be like two good ones. <laughs> and there's going to be at least, least yeah. two good objects. So, yeah, this, it, this hits uh, all three parts of the Venn diagram that I have in my head. Where, I mean, obviously there's more to it than just that, but um, this is easily a set that I'm willing to invest in in that kind of capacity. Plus, I like a lot of this stuff. I want to collect the whole Scooby gang. I want to collect all the lanterns again. I want a Peacemaker because he's never been made before. Um, I don't, I've never watched Teen Titans go except last week when I was stuck in a hotel room. It's not terrible, it's for children, obviously. I mean, it's not like geared yeah. towards adults. I think a lot of the hate comes from people that were either in their teens or like young adults watching the original, uh, whatever the original Titans cartoon was. And then it switched to like this more like yeah. chibi childish kind of one. And they're like, Oh, I can't enjoy my show anymore. It's for kids. And it's like, yeah, cartoons are yep. kind of for cartoons kids. are kind of made for kids. Yeah. That's not always, a big, but yeah, usually you're not. No, you're not wrong. Not always. Um, like i feel like that's a big thing people complain about and there's ever a, like a reboot of a cartoon like any version of scooby-doo or like any like when they oh, yeah. uh it, what, what was like it Korra, what was the reboot the, they made like the recently era. oh yeah like legend of Korra. Legend of Korra. Uh, that one not time. as much so because i think still the people that watched avatar were like oh okay this is also pretty good it's still we can all agree it's not as good but it's still like fine you know they didn't like ruin it but i feel like uh there's a like a big amount of people that are like, oh man, cartoons when I was younger were way better. I'm like, that's cool. That's when you were younger. You look through the world at a different lens. This is what kids are probably watching now. I don't know. I'm not a kid. I'm not a kid now. Maybe yeah. they do think it's terrible. I don't freaking know. I've heard but, a lot of people say, um, or not heard them. I've seen a lot of people online say that their kids watch Teen Titans Go, and so they're excited yeah, yeah. because. And I'm like, yeah, you know, if we're trying to get different demographics. The people that enjoy Scooby Doo and the people like the kids that like Teen Titans Go or the adults that like Teen Titans Go. Um, those are two very, I mean, not absolutely new IPs, but they're basically two completely new IPs as far as what Heroclix yeah. offers right now. Uh, yeah, getting a, you know, the Teen Titans squad from the cartoon that you watch and you're, you know, 10, 11, 12, whatever. Um, you know, Isaac Arnold Berkowitz is probably just foaming at the mouth for these pieces because <laughs> he's a child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. No offense, dude. he can easily beat me in Hero Clicks. Oh, so. he, oh yeah. And I say that, uh, what, he won in 2019, so he's actually like 17 now. He's almost an adult. How, yeah, it's how insane. time flies. It's uh, crazy. So, you have some solicits here for the DC set. Um, they're kind of weird. So the DC Comics Hero Clicks Batman team up miniatures game is set for an October. Now, take these all grain of salt, of course, everybody, like always. These are Hero Clicks oh, solicits. Should we go over the miniatures anything. game real quick? So that's set for October. Yeah. Uh, set for October. Yep. First time ever help Mystery Inc. work up an appetite as Scooby Doo, Shaggy, Fred, and Velma and Daphne go head to head with ace detectives Robin, Starfire, Raven, Beast Boy, and Cyborg from Teen Titans Go. Pick a team and help them gather clues to come out on top in one of the most exciting crossovers to ever come to Heroclix. Engage in up to eight thrilling campaign scenarios for two players where the results matter from session to session, so that's normal campaign stuff, or sit down for a head-to-head -head single match for raw power. Each of the beautiful pre-painted figures comes ready to play with two different modes, making this box incredibly, oh, incredible for both first-time miniature players and Heroclix veterans. Putting those sleuthing skills to the test, brand new mystery cards will bring an exciting layer of strategy. So there's more mystery cards in the starter. Uh, right. To gameplay, 
as players move around the map to gather clues and earn unique bonuses and rewards. Interesting. Uh, complete with thick double-sided map components, which Calder loves those thick double-sided map components. Yeah. Building Batman team-up theme dice. Oh, unique Batman team-up theme dice, which... I wonder how they'll do those dice. I am I am curious to see. Normally, I'm not like a huge uh, nerd when it comes to the dice and token packs. There's some that I really like, but this is one that I'm actually very interested with. Uh, this set contains everything two people need to play Heroclix with so much exciting content in one box. It's no mystery <laughs> that miniature ha. game ha. has been a massive ha. hit with retailers and customers. So this miniature game is going to include a rich multi-session campaign for two players that pivots and turns based on the results of the last session, which is neat. Uh, Ten premium quality pre-painted miniatures, each with two ways to play for beginner or advanced play. So those are the classic, the classic. ten figures I listed off earlier. Twenty character cards. So these are again going to be the double dial or switch clickable whatever characters like we've been seeing in starter sets. Six object tokens, which are just your standard object tokens. Six double sided thick map tiles. No folds. Two mystery cards. Two custom Batman team-up six-sided dice, two full-color power and ability cards, 2022 edition, and one full-color Heroclix Core Rulebook, 2022 edition. So that's what the starter is, and you said the solicit for that is locking it in sometime around October for sure, not to be changed by any forces of nature. No, definitely not. No way. Beautiful. How is that even possible? (laughs) It never happens. How would that even happen? In Heroclix? No. Simeon? No. Um, all right. Uh, I'm not going to mention the galley yet. We'll get to them in a second. But then it looks like the OP release day and then the Dyson token pack, the booster brick and the play at home kit for the Batman team up set is all set for a December release. Ouch. Dang, that's it's going to be a minute, guys. That's a ways away. That's a ways more than October. O- October is only five ish five five months to october yeah depending on like the date of release in december december yeah Yeah. dang that is that is gonna be rough so like to hold you over you you probably have the stuff that i would say people got the most upset about (laughs) scooby-doo and teen titans go is what's going to be holding you over till the next dc set so deal with it yeah Um, i'm pumped for it because i like that's just, that's just, that's just desserts for hating on those two properties. Yep. You get those for two months before you get anything that you want yep. out of the set. So I don't know if these pictures totally correspond to what they are, but the DC Comics Batman team up release day OP kit has a picture of Scooby-Doo. Maybe. And then the DC Comics booster brick just has a picture of Batman. So, I mean, okay. And then the at home kit has a picture of Shaggy. Maybe. Maybe Shaggy to play at home kit. I don't know. I don't know if those actually mean that's the character or that's the figure you're going to get for the release day for the play at home kit. Um, obviously, when you buy a booster brick, it's not just a Batman figure. So I don't know if those are placeholder images or what they are. But of course, the miniatures game is it has Robin in it. Right. So maybe maybe it is actually those characters. I don't know. Um, that's what yeah. we do know. Uh, but December release, I think. If you are ever going to get your kids into hero clicks or your nieces and nephews or whatever, perfect set. Does I think the MSRP any... seem kind of high or is that just me? Because that says, what does it say again? It says, Sorry, uh, team up booster, uh, Batman team up booster brick, MSRP 169.99. That would no, make... once. Is that 170 is what we're doing for Disney Plus, and I okay. guess that is just the way it's going to be going forward. Okay. Sadly, I mean, that's I rough, assumed. But... So here, yeah. here's my thing, and not to get too side tangent um, or preachy or anything, but here's my thing with the price bump. Do I like it? No, obviously not. I'd like for people of any background or age to be able to get into this game, and by that I mean like play in sealed events and stuff. We had somebody. Uh, come to Krypton not too long ago and they were interested in playing in our Thursday night games and we had we had some set release coming out so the next week was going to be a pre-release and the guy was like "Ah, I just can't like swing that kind of money right now so like maybe the week after that never came back and so I was like I was so excited because we had you know we finally had another person um, 
it's it's hard to get new people so it was quite literally like the cost i mean maybe there's other stuff that i can't account for but was quite literally the cost of a sealed the reason that he uh wasn't coming back at least that next week now the weeks after that i don't really know but for sure that next week and then oh so that's my that's my point about the cost i do not like it i'm not going to try and justify it but i will say i do really like that it seems in disney plus and in some of the solicits that we've seen whiz kids is trying to pack more uh like Stuff money per booster into like you boosters. said more value yeah. so we've gotten rid of the common and uncommon primes now it's a super rare prime or a rare prime if you pull a prime at all good um they're packing ob- 20 objects into the X of Swords set, uh, 57 objects into this set. You know, they're adding these mystery cards. This one doesn't have it. There doesn't list it, but they've been doing, like, the legacy cards. They've been packing as much stuff. And whether, like, you know, if you're someone that's a 100% collector, it's harder for you. And I get that. That sucks. The tarot cards, like, that's, that's something that's going to be a monumental task to collect. But... If you're just that casual person that doesn't want to have to spend an arm and a leg, you pull like one of these mystery cards, you pull a couple of these objects, and then you just turn and sell them or, you know, sell like whatever figures you pulled. And it covers like the cost. It helps cover the cost. So I I do think that it's nice. I think WizKids is actually making an effort to add value to boosters outside of like the figures. So the figures are costing more, but things that don't really cost them more are like these cards. And so I might poo-poo like the idea of all these extra cards that they're adding. But at the end of the day, I think with that price hike, it's good that people are getting like extra cards regardless of what they do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just the more value per booster is just awesome. And it's something that also it's more value per booster and it's not just adding like uh, like power creep to the figures. You know, they're not selling sets based on ah, we just, like, added plus one stats to all these figures all of a sudden kind of thing. Uh, Like, lowered the points all by 50. So they definitely did some of that in Disney+. Plus. There's some real cheap, real good stuff in Disney+. Plus. Yeah, very true. Very true, dude. Like, Steve! Anyways, good good stuff there. Um, Yeah, so, like, even though, like I said, Ice Hike and everything was... uh, it's not it's not great it's not great that it's sticking around i do hope it doesn't go up anymore obviously i think it's really rough however i will say cool stuff ain't did come in pretty clutch they had uh bricks like 140 or so 45 ish that was pretty solid that was a pretty big help you know five percent off use code top um so like you know there there's places out there that are selling it cheaper than msrp if you like know where to look oh know. right yeah i mean like i've got two venues that'll do uh like loyalty discounts where like two local venues where you can get um i believe dragon's layers 20 percent. i think it's for every hundred dollars you spend you get 20 percent. and then i can't remember how game shop works but they have a point system and once you get up to like 200 points you can cash those in for 20 percent. so obviously like if i'm purchasing a brick or a case from one of those places having that 20% off is instant better than paying MSRP. But yeah, there's definitely cheaper places to go. Uh, MSRP is just the whatever suggested retail price. So, right. All right. Now to get on to Calder's most anticipated starter, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> the thing he's yeah, dude, you, dying you to collect. It, man. I can't wait. I, I really like the little symbol. So we have, it's hard to describe, but it's a, uh, We've got a fancy little box. We got a shiny, like metallic red on white, crisp eggshell looking texture. Uh, it says Marvel Hero Clicks at the top. It's got this little trident going through an H. It's got little X's all over the sides. It says Premium Collection. It's got all these squiggly lines. It's super fancy. This looks like a cake that someone would make, right? The back of the box says, mm-hmm. You are cordially invited to the. Marvel Hero Clicks Hellfire Gala Premium Collection. Oh man, so fancy. Uh, then at the bottom in big, big bold text, warning, choking hazard. <laughs> yeah, so fancy. But uh, celebrate mutant culture with the new X Men Heroes of Krakoa. Oh, that's the end of the sentence. Heroes of Krakoa, based on the revolutionary Marvel Hellfire Gala event that charted 
some of the biggest stories in the Marvel Universe and introduce the all-new team of X-Men, the Marvel Hero Clicks Hellfire Gala Premium Collection takes you on a tour of the grandest looks from the inaugural Hellfire Gala. See the pinnacle of mutant fashion represented on these limited edition figures that push the boundaries of Heroclix style. Definitely push the boundaries of some style. Heroclix style's always been kind of like, I mean, is it in fashion to have eyes that point different directions? As far as Heroclix says, yes. Uh, every detail of the Hellfire Gala has been planned with the guests in mind. As a result, in this premium set, you will also find a limited edition version of the Powers and Abilities card, as well as uniquely crafted character cards with a special look and feel that will bring the luxury of the Hellfire Gala to your table. Walk the green carpet with these exciting and exquisitely detailed figures that make as much of a fashion statement as the gala itself. So I find all of this extremely interesting and in that we don't have a ton of information outside of this. Um, but luxurious hero clicks cards is like, okay, so I'm going to have to sleeve these bad boys. Cause they're, these are going to be like some, uh, mint condition, like very crisp looking things. Um, and then what is it? Oh yeah. A, limited edition version of the powers and abilities card so it's almost like a starter i mean it basically is a starter without the dice but i want to see like is this going to be like a super fancy pac and a super fancy set of cards so inside the set eight premium quality pre-painted miniatures eight limited edition character cards that will go with those miniatures one powers and ability card with limited edition design Ooh ah and magnetized limited edition display box so this little box does not have like clear plastic on the front uh it looks kind of like man i don't i don't know how to describe it uh it's reminiscent of the watchman kind of box where it opened up uh yeah it's magnetized so it's like a display box but you can also you know snap it open snap it close kind of thing uh it is definitely going to be one of the more fancy boxes that hero clicks has done um it reminds me of like those bookcases, like the cases where you, you open it up and there's three of a series in there, like the special edition Harry Potter books where you'd, you'd snap open like this cover. They make some things like this, uh, but yeah, we get, so in the set, we get Cyclops in a fancy leotard and ginormous visor that covers most of his face. Uh, it's cool looking. I, I'll say that. It's a cooler looking Cyclops than we normally get. We get a extremely extra Jean Grey with like giant. So she's got a mind effect coming around her head, but then she also has these like giant gold effects attached to that. So man, this figure looks cool, but it looks so fragile because like you've got tiny effects holding bigger effects. And then she's also floating. She has this giant flowing, it's not really a cape. It's like a waist cape, a wape. Is that a thing? Uh, we get Polaris, who is in sandals and what looks to be wearing a wet trash bag, like a wet, clear trash bag. Uh, we get Rogue in a like very 70s kind of like retro kind of looking thing. I don't know. I'm not a fashion dude. Uh, we get probably the coolest looking Sunfire that we've ever had. Uh, so he's got, I want to say, like some sort of like fancy, like, I don't know, kimono thing. And then he's like completely engulfed in flames and he's got, uh, his sunfire mask. So he looks pretty sweet. Uh, we get sync who is notable for being only clicks to once and also having an ID card. So depending on what he does, maybe this is a good silver option. Uh, he's just got this wacky coat that's all kinds of different colors and he's got a hat. So that's cool. Um, also, his hands look huge now that I'm looking at the sculpt. His hands are like the size of his head. That's crazy. Uh, we get an X-23. Uh, she's just in kind of like a cool dress. That's all I can say about that. Like, I don't, I can't really talk more fashion than that, but she's in like a, like a grown-up goth girl dress is what I'll say <laughs> for anyone that might understand what that means to me. Um, we get an Emma Frost in something. Emma Frost looks like she's recreating either like a like a Ziggy Stardust like album cover, like David Bowie kind of like album cover, or maybe uh, Lady Gaga kind of thing. So she's 
yeah, she's got like a weird almost fur like thing, but it's like attached to her wrists. It's not like a coat, it's like a shawl almost. And then she's got a crazy hat that just looks like two spikes coming out of her head. Uh, so that's that's all the figures in the set. They are definitely unique takes on figures that we've had before. Uh, so none of these have not been clicked before, but all of the outfits and effects and stuff are definitely way more interesting than their normal outfits. So these would all, uh, I'll say with the exception of X-23, Sync, and Rogue, most of these look like super rare or better sculpts. Um, even Cyclops, he's just too shiny to be like a common, but there's a lot of effects. There's a lot of cool outfit stuff. I'm interested for sure. It'll heavily depend on the price point, which I don't think we've seen yet. And then it'll also depend on the dials, obviously, but I would hope that they've got some interesting dials for such interesting looks. Otherwise it's just going to be, you know, Jean Grey's got speed power of mind control top dial. Cyclops will do running shot pen sai or something. What do you think? Do you do you want to get well, your hands on these fancy X Men? Uh, I don't. They didn't really make any X Men characters I'm interested in. I'm also not necessarily a high fat. I don't think any hero host player is a high fashion person. What? Uh, maybe You're saying that like right, people who wear shiny jerseys to tournaments aren't in high fashion called it. You know what? That was pretty rude of me to say that's not high fashion. That <laughs> is basically the highest fashion we have in this game. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I can skip them, uh, especially if they come at a premium cost. I don't really need to get yeah. my hands on them. Not really a big X-Men guy. Don't Throwing really that need premium these in my word life. all over. I feel like there uh, will be a premium cost. I do cost. hope, though, since... It's like a collector thing. I hope it's like, you know, the Watchmen thing. So it's like clear little plastic in there. You can open it up to see all the figures nicely displayed, all that stuff. That'll be cool. Um, I guess it'll be a kind of big box, huh? It's going to have a PAC in there. Eight figures and a PAC. So right? yeah, the box right. has to, well, At least it might PAC not be a standard size. PAC. It might be like a special sized PAC because it is a limited edition PAC version of a power and ability card. So it could be like... Little... A thinner thinner one. premium yeah could be a, like a got. thinner taller one or something that'd be pretty funny um now you have to I do hope they picture uh, eight figures fitting in this though yeah it's cute dude i i do however hope they uh have more unique stuff like like what you were saying i hope it's not just a running shot pen blast causes knockback hot you know i hope it's yeah. more than a charge blades uh whatever i know this x-men gala thing is what's happening in comics either this summer or like right now or something like that so I do hope, based off of that storyline, there's something interesting. I think they should all have a pretty cool shared trait, right? They got to. I would think um, or something. Some either, yeah, either a Still shared be. trait or well, yeah. It would, I mean, there's, there's got to be some sort of like fashion statement because, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know, dude. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll, it'll be interesting to see like where to get them, where they're at, and uh, what they do. So skipping it for me, pretty easy. But uh, I'm happy for anybody else who wants to buy these things. By all means, go for it. Yeah. Hey, the last thing we have to talk about, out of kind of nowhere, and I shouldn't even say out of nowhere, I think I, I felt I felt like I had a hunch. After we saw where the convention exclusives were going to be available at this year, I kind of had a hunch that pr there probably were going to be some events at Gen Con, and there wasn't going to be any events at Origins because they weren't going to Origins, which is weird because typically WizKids has been going to Origins. But now it looks like uh, Nationals will be happening at Gen Con this year. Uh, so it's a bit of a bummer not knowing this earlier because the Gen Con hotel block and all that stuff, I think, is over now. Probably. Um, it was also a little bit of a bummer because I told all the people who I went with last year that I... I kind of didn't feel like going this year uh, because of what I knew at the time a few months ago. And now my window to get in on with them and their trip and their car ride of people and uh, their hotel, that time is now passed. So it's a little rough for me now having to be a backpedal and be like, oh, wait, maybe I do want to go to Gen Con because Nationals is going to be there. Um and Gen Con is always awesome. In the last two years I went, there was almost nothing Hero Clicks there, except for, of course, the Connollys last year. But um, it, Gen Con is still cool. It was just, I was just like, you know, kind of sort of in Simeon's boat. I don't know if I want to go to Indiana that much. No offense to <laughs> Indiana, but it's a bit yeah. of a drive. It's a bit of a journey uh, to get down there. I'm 
Yeah, um, I'm looking at. Yeah, I am interested in going. Um, so we'll we'll try and get into more of yeah. like the costs and stuff. Uh, but one of the things I'm thinking is like, do I want to drive to Indiana a third time? Because this is Indianapolis, yeah. Indiana. Uh, at the time of the recording, 87 days from now, but that's that falls Still. on what is it, August 4th through the 7th. So Indianapolis yes. at the Indiana Convention Center in Indianapolis, August 4th through the 7th. Um, if you've never been to a con like this before and you're interested, you'll have to buy a badge. The sooner you buy it, usually the better. Uh, and then when you're when you get there, I don't know if you can pre-buy this, but you have to buy all the events that you want to attend unless they are listed as free. So you can't just go with like cash and hand uh, like some whiz kid employee cash like we can at Worlds. You have to actually prepay for like the events. So if you want to do like 10 battle royals, you have to pay somebody at like yeah. a, the entrance for those battle royals. So this is kind of annoying because it it's like it's each battle royale, but it's also like at a set time, which, which is I think really strange sucks. how they set yeah. that up. Yeah. Um, so let me see what the cost is because I I want to say a three day pass. It's always cheaper to get the three day pass than to get um, like two days in a row. Uh, but that doesn't it necessarily should be about hundred hundred twenty something bucks is typically what it is. Right. So yeah, I mean, looking at depending on like the drive, potential like flights, and then hotels. Uh, Gen Con's a pretty big event, so you've got probably, let's say you drive, and you want to be there all three days because you want to get your money's worth for like whiz kid stuff, just to get there and not including food because uh, we could say like sixty dollars per like day for food if you're eating relatively cheap and not going like out to eat and stuff. I think sixty is manageable, so that's a hundred and eighty dollars for food. Probably not gonna like say definitely but let's say just for simplicity of math 220 for a round trip ticket so you're at 400 dollars just to get there and not die of starvation uh then a hotel is going to be you know if you're splitting a hotel maybe 50 dollars a night if you find a nice airbnb maybe 75 dollars a night uh otherwise if you have to drive in every day and you get a hotel that's further away maybe only like a hundred dollars a night um Stuff like that, if you're getting a room to yourself, $100 would be on, like, the lower end. So yeah. then you're looking at you're looking at about 700 now. I mean, depending on which of those options, I'm going with the higher one just so to scare people away from doing this. No, uh, <laughs> not really. But that's everything before buying into the convention, right? That's just your plane ticket. That's just food. That's just that stuff. Uh, now, getting the three-day pass, like Calder said, somewhere around about 100, 120, 150, somewhere in like that range. I don't, I can't pull it up right now, but somewhere in that range. And then um, we'll go over the event cost as well. But yeah, so I don't think it's out of the realm to say if you're doing this cheaply and you drive or you ride with some friends, you could probably do Gen Con for like not including the whiz kid events that you have to buy into, you could probably do Gen Con for $400, but I don't think you can do it for much cheaper than that. If you can, I mean, kudos, but I think if, if I end up doing it, I would like to fly this time because I'm just tired of driving to Indiana. Uh, depending <clears throat> on tickets, if I have to drive, uh, it obviously be a little bit cheaper. Um, but I, I would probably be hitting like the $700 mark before like the WizKid stuff. And so it has to be worth it for me to go there. Now, they did show what convention exclusives are going to be at when Nationals, right? So that was like the Phoenix Sentinel, the Harley Quinn, some other random stuff like that. Uh, I don't think the Mighty Thors. Yeah, I don't Thors, totally remember which ones were all there. But or the Fantastic Thors, out. not Mighty Thors. But I guess, so to go along with that, just to give you like a rough estimate price point. So, you know, if you were thinking about it, obviously you can do your own math and it might end up different for you. It might be a little bit less than what I'm saying. It might be a little bit higher. Um, fixed costs are going to be the WizKid events and Gen Con. Everything else is kind of in flux. Whether you stay with friends, whether you find an Airbnb, whether you go hungry for three days, whether you like hitchhike, you know, there's a ton of different 
fluctuation in cost, but things that are going to be fixed are the uh, the badges for the three day events, or I guess technically four days that you can go, um, and then the WizKid events. So I'm going to go through a lot of the WizKid events. I'll skip Dice Masters, but I'll like some of these are kind of interesting. So I think I'll I'll talk about a little bit of them. Uh, if you end up there on Wednesday, so they do have WizKids is going to have a create in-store excitement with the new WizKids D&D Onslaught miniature game on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Uh, EDT, I don't know, Eastern mm-hmm. Daylight Time. Uh, that's going to be a free little, you know, they'll talk to you about this new miniature game they got. That's kind of fun. They have, throughout multiple days and multiple times, they have Tower of Gygarn Kill it and keep it. WizKids, Gargantuan, Tiamat. So I think this is... So this is a 10-hour or $10, two-hour long Whoa. game session. Yeah. I think this is saying, like, if you you basically play a 5th edition, like, encounter, and if you kill the Tiamat, that, like, that's the $400, uh, like, six-headed dragon that they made. If you kill it for $10, you get it. Which, obviously, they're probably not going to make it too easy, but man, that's kind of interesting. So they do that multiple times. Uh, but that, the first one's going to be Thursday at 11. Um, then they're doing some other Dungeon and Dragon stuff. The first Hero Click stuff starts on Thursday. It says 1 p.m. And this is what Calder was talking about, how like the Battle Royals are listed at certain times, which is strange. But I guess if you're doing like a bunch of Battle Royals, you can just hit every time slot. But like I I don't know it's just strange that they have them at yeah. like time listed and not just as you can go. Um, not sure exactly how it will work. Also not sure what boosters they'll be using, but it looks like X of Swords. It's quite potentially yeah. That X so of Swords. because they're doing organized play events of X of Swords, which is pretty cool. They have one yeah. on Friday, but um, this is it seems kind of wild to me, Simeon. The it says it's going to be four hours, so probably a little sealed game here, right? It's sixty dollars for entrance into the X of Swords storyline. That's OP what I was. So event. the it's battle royals are going to be eighteen dollars, right? Uh, price obviously, of booster, battle royal ish. is going to be yeah booster plus convention exclusive prices rolled into mm-hmm. that, uh, like whatever they drop in the middle. Um, and then yeah, the the X of Swords storyline organized play kit, they're holding it at sixty dollars, and which is on the high end of what a lot of shops have been saying. You know. Uh, what is it like the brick costs two hundred dollars? So ten boosters, two hundred dollars. So if a shop was doing it at cost and not making any money off of it, it'd be twenty dollars for a booster. So I have to assume that this storyline organized play kit that they're running, they're giving you two boosters. Like they have to be. There's no right. way they're giving you one booster. So I'm trying to figure out even if two boosters is thirty six bucks. Where's the other twenty four dollar? There must be some banger prizing in this or something. I don't know. Maybe three boosters. Oh, here, here's what it says. Yeah. So okay. I should have just clicked on this to begin with. Play all three months of the storyline event in one afternoon. Oh. Players receive three exclusive boosters, participation prizes, and a chance to win limited edition prize figures. Minimum number of players is four. Maximum number of players is sixteen. Uh, uh, never mind. That's pretty good. That's that is pretty a good price. so yeah. All three months, I didn't actually. realize I that. But everything I said back, that's you get pretty, one that's booster of each month. You get the um, the participation prize of each month. So if yeah, if you can make it to Gen Con and maybe like you don't have a local shop that's running this event, yeah. you can get all three months in one go. And this will be way before i think any other shops doing it but that's at cost well you know obviously not their cost but that's at what like msrp is is three boosters sixty dollars so that's actually i was kind of writing it off because the cost was kind of high but it is weird (laughs) i'm guessing you're gonna mix and match the boosters but it is weird that it says the duration's four hours i guess 16 people uh they'll probably just do swiss and not do like a cut or anything and that's assuming it's filled but yeah that's actually uh interesting so they're doing one let's see they have one every day right so thursday you can do battle royals it says uh 1 p.m i'm assuming see 1 p.m 2 p.m 3 4 
I'm yeah. assuming they go till six or something. Uh, you can also do the U.S. National Qualifier. I'm assuming these are just called like grinders. Cost four dollars. I'm assuming there's prizing. Let's see. Again, I can just click on it. Three rounds of play. Top four players from each qualifier event proceed to the national champions on Saturday. Team sheet required. Maximum number of players, 16. So the top four out of 16 qualify. So if you're not qualified for nationals, um, and to check to see if you're qualified, I believe the ROC has the whatever points, right? Oh, like the ROC WKO points or whatever? The WKO, yeah. Those are if you're pre-qualified. So... Me and Calder yeah. are both pre-qualified from like 2019 or something. From a while ago, yeah. Um, so, I think we both have somewhere around like 100. Did the grinders say anything but... about how you win a LE or any of that? Does uh, it mention that see. at all? Experience required, expert. You play it regularly and know all the rules. Uh, no materials are provided for this game. You must bring your own. Yes, this is the Battle tournament. Royales do specifically say at the end of the game, prize pools include limited edition con exclusive figures. I didn't this... know if... This does not mention any prizing, I think. So you're paying $4 for a shot to get into the Nationals um, right. to qualify for Nationals. So that right. is rough. I think historically this has been a free thing, depending on the event. But yeah, it doesn't look um, like there's I any prizing. I thought they prizing. were like 10 bucks each. I, thought, I actually thought they were more than $4. Okay. Because they used to get an Ellie. The winner, I think maybe someone... It was either the winner or the second place. You could choose to either get like an LE or you got like a buy in a nationals, or maybe you did just get the buy and an LE. I don't remember, but I feel like maybe they gave away some LEs. I, was I can't say, remember. It's been, it's obviously, it's 2019. It's, yeah, it's been almost three years to. since we've since we've oh, done this stuff, so it's hard yeah, to remember. It's been a minute. Uh, yeah, the first X of Swords storyline is going to be Friday at 1 p.m. That's something I'd be interested in, honestly. That'd be I'd blow, cool. I'd blow 180 to do that three times if they're doing it oh all three gosh, days. Simeon. I'd probably like, also give me do your tarot rolls. cards now. Yeah, but I mean, that's yeah, that's cool. Getting like oh, it's a, a month three. Oh, no, it's a solid deal. Three like months early idea. or something like that. Um. So is yeah, they're early. Is this is X of Swords not coming out in July? Is it not a oh, month after? This might. Yeah, this might be towards the tail end of it. I guess. So then that's you'll true. get the last month early, like a little early. Sure. Yeah. It looks like and, you know second month probably a little early too. Battle Royals start at 10 a.m. most days, and it looks like they cut them off around four most days. That doesn't sound very whiz kidsy. Like normally, Battle Royals start as soon as the convention opens, which would be like about 10 a.m. But they usually run as long yeah. as whiz kids is running stuff, which they're still running stuff till 6 p.m. So. I mean, it is still a six-hour day of Battle Royals if you want to do those. Uh, they'll probably have Disney Plus and stuff still. Yeah. Uh, you can always, I guess, early buy tickets to Battle Royales. However, since they're going to have a ton running at all times, I don't think any of them are ever going to sell out, like, the early buy tickets. You know what I mean? Like, at 1 o'clock, there's a Battle Royale. But, you know, right? there's going to be, like, 10 during one o'clock or whatever, you know, there's going to be a ton going on in that one hour. So I don't think the tickets are ever going to sell. I don't think they have a cap on tickets either. Um, these are all things you can buy early when you buy a badge. You can add that stuff to your right, itinerary yeah, yeah. or like whatever Which is somehow. A lot more convenient than standing in the line for sure. Way better than generics. <laughs> I don't miss those whatsoever. Is that uh, Origins? At Origins, yeah, the little poker the generics, chips. Each yeah. generic is worth two dollars, and you have to go their weird roundabout gambling loophole they have. Sure, I guess it's it's you know it's whatever. It was it wasn't that bad, but I mean like this um, is a little weird that you have to like probably I don't even know how you have to get a ticket or something weird like put it in the yeah. system that you went They'll like a to, computer like, or some crap barcode or something. Um, so it's going to be a little more let more annoying than just being like, all right, here's my tokens or here's my money, and then I get a booster and then I go play. It's a little bit more to it than that, but the I Battle Royals do say minimum yeah. number of players four, maximum number of yeah. players sixteen, which is not oh, a thing. okay. So that's that's interesting. That's so strange. maybe they're planning on running three Battle Royals at a time. That is no, sense. They, they, they've got to have way that. more room than that. You can't do that. I think yeah. that's just a generic like. Four to sixteen yeah. is what they put for I everything just, or something. Uh, looked here. So Saturday at six PM, this is the HeroClix US Nationals uh championship finals. Uh says it's gonna happen for an hour. So yeah, that's funny. Uh to <laughs> I me. don't think that's quite up to date. No, uh, probably not. Um, uh, I like the HeroClix learn to plays. I don't think we mentioned these yet, but they have yeah. little two dollar 
basically the entire convention long little hero clicks learn to play hero clicks and you know they they mentioned that it's like 20th anniversary and all that it's really cool and it's i think it's awesome um minimum one player maximum six players which means they probably have enough people to run three games at a time or something um but that's really cool that they are doing these learn to play hero clicks throughout the event i that shows that they're trying to get more people into the game stuff like that i think the learn to plays combined with battle royals and combined with the x of swords triple month thing um that to me is like great for all the new players this yeah. makes it a not just competitive people competitive people go to nationals do your grinders do whatever you got to do uh, play battle royales too of course i mean if you're competitive do whatever you want to do i'm saying like that's the more stuff geared toward you but the stuff geared toward people that buy collect, you know casual people want to get into the game there's a ton of stuff for them which makes me super happy because usually it's just battle royals if you're a casual player and all you have is battle royals during a nationals event but now it's like a learn to play we got the x of swords stuff that's dope i i love that idea uh, they are so WizKids is doing a collaboration talk with Paizo and Critical Role. Yeah, uh, it's says, probably all D and D. Join garbage, us for an though. yeah. It well, like, it's mostly talking about the miniature lines. So yeah, join us for an analysis of the miniature miniature lines from Paizo, Critical Role, and WizKids, where this collaboration goes next, and the wins and challenges of producing content for a growing medium. But this is a free event um, from three to four on Friday, uh, so that's. One of the free events that you could you could go and listen to stuff. I don't know who yeah. will be. Mm. If it'll be like the Ignacio that's given the talk, yeah, dude. Part Probably of like the WizKid side. I know uh, they're they're due for that. Yeah. So, like Calder said, uh, the Hero Clicks Nationals National Championship Finals will be six p.m. But let's see, when do they start actual nationals? The national championship says one p.m. Uh, that says four hours. It's a little late in the day. Yeah, it's a little yeah, late in the day. It does say maximum number of players sixteen. So maybe this is like top sixteen. I don't know. This stuff isn't phoned in super tight because obviously, if more than sixteen, uh, it's a little people early. Qualify. So I feel like maybe if vendors are allowed to change those, that's probably going to get changed. Oh, right? Like definitely. Just... Yeah. Yeah. Um. See, because they do have a final qualifier Saturday morning at nine. Yeah. I feel like. So before they can start actual nationals, that final qualifier does have to end. Uh, Has now, to. If they right. decide to remove well, that from Saturday, and, you know, I'm not sure exactly how they'll do it, but unless, you know, maybe they won't allow WKO points and you'll have to qualify to be there. So they're That'd expecting not enough people to qualify. That could be that a thing. Suck. I mean, it's would still possible that like 40 people would qualify and that wouldn't work out. Uh, then finally, Sunday, you've got Battle Royals from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, they've still got the Hero Clicks Learn to Play events going on, and they don't have the any more of the uh, monthly organized uh, sword, X of Swords storyline thing on Sunday. So it's mostly the same stuff on Friday and Saturday, and then... Thursday, yeah, Thursday they don't have that. So if you're interested in that monthly organized play kit, that's only a Friday, Saturday thing. But Battle Royals run from Thursday to Sunday, and U.S. Nationals run from Thursday qualifiers to Saturday finals, apparently. So see how that goes. But yeah, oh, and what is, let me see, what was the price on the Nationals? So Saturday. Nationals is the free. If you're qualified, okay. you're in. Yeah. U.S. Nationals was free. Typically okay. how it is, yeah. That is free. Nice. Um, players who qualified U.S. Nationals compete in an event. 300-point modern constructed. Four rounds of single elimination. <laughs> yeah, this is that's definitely not how it's going to happen. I Well, I hope no. not. There's Four no rounds way. of single elimination would be hilarious, though. Be some real upsets. Uh, and then the finals, they don't have any information on pricing what does nationals typically give uh like one of every con that one of every con typically like chase prime or something, or something like that or maybe chase prime goes to chase prime second i cannot that's what i thought chase prime was second and then maybe like a full set was first yeah the factory sealed set man yeah i i'm not interested at all in nationals i'll probably do the other stuff if i go but way I more say, than the other stuff 
if they have a factory set of X of Swords with one of every tarot card, you'll see me doing those grinders and trying to get... I'll, I mean, I've got no chance, but I'll, I'll try. I will definitely, you know, no Battle Royals, like full-on uh, Rocky Balboa mode, running up oh, and down geez. stairs, punching hero oh, clicks. Stuff like that. Tamin's gonna like be like, "All right, I got my Thanos build copied from Dan Powell. <laughs> that's how apparently you win tournaments. So that's what I'm doing. No, I'm gonna I, copy. I the tape. I'm gonna copy Scott Crampton's uh, copy of the Thanos. Oh yeah. Oh dude, that's right. <laughs> yeah, for if sure. The more you copy, the better yeah, it gets. Be two copies down the line. Uh, yeah. What are things that are gonna be legal? So Disney Plus, Disney Plus, maybe first the first month of, month of, X, of, of X, X, X of Swords, and maybe the main set of X of Swords will be legal for this constructed i don't it's know if enough Iron stuff Maybe. will change so speaking of thanos a lot of people there's been like a lot of chatter we're obviously not like the big competitive guys that talk about uh what matters in this what world. Uh, no. what but Simeon, uh, i will say that my, my, my states win three years ago and your popper win doesn't make us the hey, most qualified i have a states talk win with popper about... and a states for 300 oh moderate. sorry yeah. sorry simeon apologies Two different states apologies uh my bad one Mr. of them's Worldwide technically a champion here. map but you know oh, it's a champion map but still i'm just saying those clearly simeon obviously Put i mean just look at tier. our record at the Kilted Classic, we're, we're obviously qualified to talk about this stuff, yeah, dude. Yeah, to of commentate on on why yeah. Thanos isn't. So here, here's my thing. Thanos doesn't win every round. So at the Kilted Classic, there was no undefeated Thanos at the Kilted Classic. Uh, in the finals, like, Matty G beat that same team earlier in Swiss. So, yeah. I mean, maybe it was because, like, I think Scott was running that one as well. I think maybe he had made a mistake in that first match that he didn't make in the second match or something. But like Thanos is not unbeatable by any means. Um, now, is it like an easier thing to pilot? Probably it's probably, you know, it does a lot of stupid stuff that doesn't have to make you think like I can just shoot through everything, which is, you know, a great, <laughs> a great method. If you don't know how to like place figures, you can just always have line of fire. Now I'm going to say, with my lack of knowledge in like the competitive community, I do think that tarot cards end up making Thanos almost unplayable. Um, I think there's a simple, a couple of simple tarot cards that we've already seen. And, you know, granted we've seen maybe 20 at this point out of 78. And out of the ones that we've seen, I've seen a handful that nerf Thanos to the point where he's like a big brick that just sits there and, can't do anything the the main one is what is it uh it's not the cups uh it's it's the one with uh egg with uh gold balls and he gives everyone on your team stealth and opposing characters can't use improved targeting abilities that just shuts down most of what thanos is good at doing which is ignoring terrain ignoring elevation ignoring blocking like all that stuff so that one is enough to stop Thanos from doing pretty much anything for a single turn. Unless he actually wants to like move in front of your characters and give you like a line of fire to attack him. There's a few other ones that can like hand out battle fury and stuff to hit characters, which obviously a range based character, if it gets battle fury, it suddenly is not doing range based things. I... So that's also really, really solid. But yeah, I just think there's enough stuff and obviously you know it can go the other way too thanos can get boost from tarot cards but i think there's right. enough stuff that just straight up shut down like a tentpole team whereas it doesn't hurt like the blackheart monster team because if you give all your character stealth against a blackheart team he's still gonna like charge up and flurry you or uh you know get tk'd out by venom magneto and like hit you sky tyrant's still gonna like come at you if you give those characters Battle Fury, they're still going to come after you. And obviously, we won't know until we see the full set of tarot cards yeah. and we see some play. We won't know till we know. And there might just be, not even tarot cards, but like a figure oh, in the sure. next set. That also, like, there might be some new Thanos, you know? Yeah, I don't figure. see or a new Disney figure Plus that shifting it up whatever. a whole lot. Uh, not really. Sadly. Um, the Watchers, yeah. Sakaar and Iron Man, yeah. 
uh dude collector you know like a lot of supporty there's no crazy tent pulley thanos type figure in disney plus there's a lot of supporty stuff that'll help add yeah everything and obviously objects and whatever else also um, it's like not for nothing leech comes out in house of x or x of sorts uh, true that so, is that is big i don't know if anyone's been play testing him but if you can like do the leech lockjaw or some sort of x-men swap team like fantastic four swap or x-men swap and you have leech as an option just the threat of him might keep people from playing that thanos because you drop leech down next to him and he can't phase away he can't he can't do anything other than just do a normal punch a punch so, leech. yeah and if you just can to be do fair, a drop off team and follow up stats wise he's pretty well equipped to just kind of right. punch and kill leech i think in stats. <laughs> In silver, Leech is an like he's an auto ID place. Oh yeah. In 100%. modern, I think you have to play him on a Fantastic Four swap with that Legacy Lockjaw. That's the yeah. only way he doesn't yeah. get just tabled right away. Even then, that Lockjaw can't phase. But no, but he's got that. He hands out that Mastermind, which is the big. Oh, thing. True. 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 Like that's that's one of the few characters that can protect Leech, unless you're gonna. Well, even equipping him wouldn't be worth it. So, like, you... Honestly, that's, like, the only play I can think of is that Legacy Lockjaw gives Leech uh, Mastermind. And so, unless your opponent outwits Leech or you can't get the drop off and they shoot him before he gets down the line, but better players than me will have it honed in by then, I think. And Lockjaw Maybe. still has a 14 speed <laughs> for 30 points. Still has a 14 yeah, true. speed. <laughs> so far. Yeah. That's my Flex take. Stuff. Uh, I, I'm saying, like, I've heard a lot of buzz about Legacy Thanos. I think a lot of it's just joking. People, like, you know, saying that, like, he needs to be banned or needs to be nerfed. I think it's just a joke because he's been doing really well um, in tournaments and stuff. He's definitely not unbeatable. Like, obviously, monster squab squads with, like, Blackheart and uh, Sky Tyrant and Venom Magneto can really pull their weight against uh, a Thanos. But... I just don't think Thanos is going to be long lived. Uh, if you're looking at investing in one now, I would say don't. Like I, I do not think he will last till the end of the year as a meta staple. Is there ever a year where, in May or April, we had a figure that then went on to like win worlds? Uh, look, Simeon, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest, so I'm thinking like, was it 2020 or was it 2021? When did we do online? I mean, I was it know, 2021 dude, so when we did it, online right? nationals? And Sam Worlds? Cap has always been good. If we look at like Sam Cap's career, she has always been good and get getting better. Yeah, like so she, you know, she's a character. Obviously, I think Shredders uh, come out a while ago, and they are still good. You know, they won. Obviously, uh, oddly enough, though, a thing that's like Thanos, Unimind never won like a major Wiz yep. Kids tournament. No, so. Yeah. Unimind, for Unimind as good as he was, yeah, yeah, never had an actual official big win, you know. But um, like Vulture Hawkeye did, you know. Yeah. So won a yeah. nationals and then on that, yeah, yeah. Uh, so my my thinking is, uh, it was either 2020 or 2021. Whenever um, Lucas was running that Hulk Batman Prime, Immortal Immortal oh, Hulk Batman yeah. Prime. <laughs> Uh, so it might have been 2020 with like Ace, that kind of stuff. Um, that team was so solid in April, May, June. And then by the time we got to like towards the end of the year and we had, you know, we had Fantastic Four and we had Spider-Man out and we had all this other stuff. Suddenly that team wasn't even, I mean, Lucas was probably still doing really well with it, but like Immortal Hulk was not making it to a ton of teams anymore. And so I just think, you know, early in the year, it's too early to call certain things. Also, like I said, it's a tentpole team. Like, it's just the one figure. Whereas Monster Team, you've got a undercosted Magneto. You've got an undercosted Sky Tyrant. You've got, truthfully, an undercosted uh, Blackheart. Like, all these figures that do way too much for their point values. And then you've got a guy that's 175 points and does enough to be competitive with that. And I'm, I really don't want to see that changed because that's how hero click should be. If I'm paying almost two thirds of my build for a character, it should be able to hold its own against 
two thirds of another build, right? Yeah, you would like <laughs> you don't to have think to so. agree. You don't have well, to. yeah, I'm not gonna, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like I'll say, sorry. I was uh, gonna be nice. I was like, maybe I'll be nice this episode, and then I'm like, mm. and this will this will shift me us the into out. Uh, our our battle royal talk. Um, so Disney really? Plus is Doctor Strange Supreme for 195 points. So okay, yeah, here we go. For more points than Thanos, he's a 13 for five psychic blast, sees through hindering, eight range, two lightning bolts. Uh, you can add five points for the cape, which gives him sidestep, flight, and plasticity, which is pretty much necessary for that point value. Uh, he doesn't do enough to stop a Thanos for more points. So that is, I mean, obviously he's an uncommon character. So this is more of like a sealed and collector piece kind of thing. This isn't like meant to be competitive, at least not at the 195 point line. But... I would rather see like this strange Supreme at 195 be able to like phase for free, uh, heal for free, all the stuff for free for 195 points rather than, you know, what he is for 195 points. For 195 points, he's impressive, but he's not going to be worth two thirds of your build in a competitive environment. And that's, I mean, I guess in a nutshell, that's fine. Not everything needs to be competitive. This will be a, like, casually competitive thing where if you put this on the table, your opponent's going to have a hard time taking it down. But, you know, just completely gets wiped in any kind of competitive setting. I mean, true. Like, so if we're, we are talking a point, ugh, hate to say the word, formula, and it doesn't exactly all add up, now does it? Not usually, no. No. <laughs> uh, um, so we're talking a lot about all this competitive trash. So speaking of Thanos, Thanos won the Hero Clicks for Huntington's tournament. That was, of course, Scott Crampton's Thanos team that uh, won. It was Thanos versus Thanos. It was a copy versus an original Dan Powell versus Scott Crampton. Pretty funny. It wasn't the exact uh, same so team, though. So It that, wasn't, no. Yeah. I tried watching some of it, and man, that is... The one reason I'll never be able to play Thanos, it is played so boring. It yeah. is like watching like two turns just to get to like a mind control, just to like carry back to your starting area kind of thing. I was like, very cool. Like it was super boring. And that's not a knock against the people playing it. Just not my style. I'd rather slam all my figures into like their starting area and just roll dice. Um, that very. That's why I like drop off teams. Yeah, that's, that's way yeah. more fun to me. It's one of the reasons why I liked the old, early Vulture builds until I realized that it was just kind of oppressive, and then all of a sudden it wasn't anymore. But yeah, like the Avenger Swarm from 2017, that kind of stuff with like giant girls. Those team oh, yeah. gives up; they give up a lot of points, and Thanos gives up a lot of points too. It just doesn't give up Thanos like almost ever. Usually, yeah. But anyways, uh, we had sealed winner was Mike Holloway Thursday night. Uh, Scott Crampton. Spent Holland, another guy. I'm sorry, I don't know. Uh, and then teams was the winners of teams was Chris Cottrell, uh, Jackson Smith, and then Randy Carter. So, congrats to all those guys winning all those events. Uh, we have a little bit of so, kind of a question we did get was Huntington's here who's for Huntington's related, so we'll talk about it right now. Matt asked, did either of us win any bids? If you did, but uh, was it worth the price? Also, how bad was that app? So the app wasn't as bad for me this year as it was last year. I was driving home from the airport trying to bid, and by me, I mean a uh, person I was with. So uh, she was bidding for me, and I was like, ah, please just keep bidding. <laughs> I was like, we're going to go up to 65. And I got past 65, and I was like, We'll go up to 75, you know? Yeah. Uh, I think is kind of the, the struggle you make, the internal struggle you make in yourself uh, when bidding on stuff on, like, eBay and whatever. Uh, but it only crashed once, and then I was only unsure if I actually won. That, that was a little weird. I do hate that it's a full minute. The full minute is a little killer. I like that it's not a shutout. I know Simeon's a big fan of the shutout. Yeah, um, I do but like the sniping. I don't care for it. I hate sniping because, honestly, if it wasn't for the Oxit... Adding a minute, I would have gotten sniped out of my U.S. agent, which would have felt pretty bad. Um, Did you end up winning it? 
I did end up winning it. Yeah, nice. yeah. So uh, seventy six bucks. This is the only thing I won from the auction, and it was the U.S. agent. But seventy six dollars. Own a charity. That's fine. I get my U.S. agent prime. I and I get really. I get the figure that made me the most excited for Disney Plus. The, See, early the reveal on. of that figure made me want to like write an article about it. Made me right. want to really get into it. Like that. I owe. I owe a lot to that figure, and it's the one Scott Cr- uh, Scott Porter. Excuse me. Too many Scots. Too many Scots. The one that Scott Porter. Old. And even though he was a little disrespectful to my man, the U.S. agent, that's okay. Um, I don't, he's still awesome. Scott's been talking about how that U.S. agent's like super gross, like super good. Oh no, no, he said it was good. He was just like, now was John Walker a good person? I'm like, oh, yeah, exactly. Scott, he was <laughs> oh, justified. I see. Not in on the figure, on the, the no, not on the figure, yeah. on like the person character. Sure, uh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No figures. Obviously, anyone with a brain can probably say it's pretty amazing. Um, but no, I'm excited, and it's going to get signed. So it's like the first time we ever saw U.S. Agent Hero Clicks, you know, from the Scott Porter unboxing. I'm very thankful that he was separate from the rest of like the chase. Oh yeah, not like added to like the yeah. It wasn't like the Chase Prime Disney Plus set or something. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm all, very thankful. All so the Scotts. I, I was Disney pumped. Plus Plus, I was pumped yeah. for that. I think that was like the only thing that made sense for me to bid on that Calder Ness should have won. Uh, I did, someone messaged me a little after the auction. They were like, hey, dude, I didn't realize I was bidding against you, man. I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, nah, it's okay. Nothing 10 bucks won't, won't, won't fix. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't, then they didn't pay Tommy 10 bucks. That's okay. I didn't expect him to. Uh, but yeah, so I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. If you bid against me, you know, you want it too. But uh, I feel like there should be some unspoken rules in the auction. And so you like, bid someone up, maybe? at one point I wanted one of those, uh, one of like the Barnstable wedding maps. And then I realized that the like cheaper bid on it was Anthony. So I was like, oh, mm. I can't outbid They'd him. They'd probably let him have his it. own map. Uh, hopefully he up. gets one somehow if he didn't. I don't uh. know. So my experience, uh, did I win any bids? No. At one point, I had $1,200 Dang. worth of bids out. I had, this was like fairly early on, but at one point I had... I kept like boosting the prices on stuff. Like it would be at 30 and I just send a bid for like 55. And so at one point, almost half of the items, except like the real big high dollar stuff. Um, I had, I was like, had winning bids on. And so one thing that I didn't bother bidding on that I really thought I was going to was the tarot cards, because I thought it said like, there was going to be two sets of tarot cards. I thought it might be like a split, like one was like 34, the other one was 34. If you got both, you'd get a full set of tarot cards. Now, granted, that might have came out to way more than I estimated, because just the 12 and 5 came out to like 600 combined or something. Uh, So no, I didn't bother vote or voting. I didn't bother bidding on either of those because it was just a smaller set and I don't need them that early. Plus, there was a lot of other stuff that I was interested in. Uh, everything I bid on, uh, I bid on a bunch of the in-person battle royals because I was going to give um, super fan of the show, Lucas Tom Van Hollen, the ability to play a battle royal with Scott Porter if I won. So at one point I was winning three of those. Oh, nice. But uh, I was also bidding on all the Superman Primes, all of the John Cena's, all of the tokens. Uh, I had bid the Empire chase prime set or factory set or whatever it was i had bid that up to like 460 or something at one point i don't know what that ended up going for Uh, i know i didn't win though because in the last minute my app did crash i reloaded it and my phone is not my phone's got eight gigs of ram it's got a huge processor in it it's not a slow phone uh it was just and i'm running off like my home's wi-fi so i don't have slow wi-fi or anything The app just had probably a hundred and some people bidding at one time. And so it was just like booting some people out and I could not open up a single thing. to bid. I think think everybody collectively can agree that the Oxit app needs work for like actually just not closing out on itself. Yeah. There's a lot going on there and it just sort of shuts itself down when there's too much happening or even not even that much happening. It's kind of rough. So like, it's fine. It's a fine experience. I like the idea of not getting shut out, but like they really do need to fix the app closing. That last like that. minute, it like, sucks because so yeah. many people hop on in like the very last portion. It's just yeah. And so 
Matt said, uh, if you did, was it worth the price? If I had won any of the stuff, it would have been worth the price. Yeah. Like when I was bidding now, I don't know what it ended up as because after I realized I couldn't get back into the app, I just closed it and I haven't opened it again. So I don't even know. I know I didn't win anything because the last thing I could see was all of my bids were in red because I had been outbid. So I haven't opened it back up. I don't know what everything went for. So I don't know if any of those would have been worth the price. I, there was one thing I saw sell for less than what I was willing to pay for it. It sold for Ooh. like 44 whatever it was, and I was willing to pay like 60 something. Um, and I just couldn't get the bid in. It wouldn't like accept it or anything. I want to say it was just a spirit of the game, or maybe it was a John Cena. It was, it was one of those like, you know, little figure kind of things, not one of like the big lots. Um, and like, I wanted one of the shirts too, one of the signed Hero Clicks for Huntington shirts, which I might just buy one from the ROC store that had, because those are still going to charity as well. So you can buy a lot of the maps and shirts from the store. But yeah, it would have been worth the price. Uh, how bad was the app? So this is coming from someone that I've never developed an app. I don't know anything about coding apps or anything like this. But I will say a desktop site would be very welcomed. So I'm not saying like eBay or whatever. But if Oxit had a desktop function as well, where you could bid on the same thing from the desktop, and there was one person that said they use an emulator to emulate an Android device and then downloaded the app on that, so they were bidding from their computer. And I was like, oh, I'll do that next year because that sounds way better. But yeah, yeah I know things don't crash. Like desktop sites don't crash nearly as often when they have traffic in like the mid-hundreds. Now, I'm not saying that there's like anything wrong with the app. Obviously, apps are bound to crash when they get higher traffic flows than they're used to and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, you could chalk it up to Wi-Fi or it's definitely not my phone. I'll say that. It's not my phone. It's not on my end. Right. I don't have yeah. an iPhone and it's whoa, it's a pretty whoa, fast whoa. phone. But I, mean, uh, I will I also... I my iPhone 11 for it, bud. That's me. <laughs> Rude. The one thing I'll say... Uh that I don't think is like a good way to like think about the app. Um, obviously there's, you know, they can do stuff to make it better or we can try and improve on it or whatever. Um, saying that people should just enter their highest bid to avoid the app crashing. That's not how auctions work. Uh, right? That's pretty so stupid. Yeah. Multiple times it was said they should just bid whatever their highest bid. If it was a silent auction, mm. that's what you do. Yes. But that's not how auctions work. If you've ever been to a live auction or, I don't know, heard anything about an auction, it's not put the highest amount up. Like, you know, it's it's a bidding war. So it's supposed to be a right. back and forth. Obviously, I'm not going to put, you know, I'm willing to pay $12,000 for a switch click. It's like, even if I am, I don't want to do that. Like, you know, that's not how auctions work. And even if it was, if I if my max is 90, like Calder, you said 65, and then you bumped it up to like 75. Right, yeah, exactly. If yeah. you had put 65 and then the app crashed and 65 was the highest you were willing at that moment and you hadn't seen that you got outbid or you, could, you got kicked out of the app, you wouldn't have spent that other 75. So sure, you can always say put the highest bid you're willing to do, but it's the heat of the moment that drives an auction. It's that back and forth that drives the auction. It's not just putting, you know, some high number out there and hoping for the best. That's just. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll say that's a bad take on how this app should work. Whoever was saying that, like, that's just not how auction apps should work. Um, and then one thing that I would also one feature that I think would be great is if you could highlight multiple items and bid them all up at once so I don't have to, like, one by one go down the list and yeah, increase prices. I would like um, if at least all of them went to the top. You know what I mean? Like, the ones you were bidding on. Right. Went to, like, the top if of your If there was a way to organize them. Yeah, if that'd I could be really nice. hit a button that says, like, you know, filter by, like, things I'm losing bids on, and then I could yeah. highlight them and increase my bid on all of those items by five or increase like the current bid by five on all of those items that'd be way better and uh like i don't know if the functionality could be done for that that's just my complete ununderstanding of how apps work 
that'd be a function that I would really appreciate. Uh, it's like on eBay. If two items are ending at the same time and you really want both and you have to bop between the two on like your phone, it's really hard to win both when you're doing that. Now, on this app, obviously the time gets extended, but what if one time gets extended and the other one doesn't and you're bidding on the one that the time got extended on and then the one that didn't get extended ends because you're clicking back to the thing, scrolling down and then finding it, you know. So there is no sniping on this app, but I will say if you're buying stuff on the bottom of the screen, you've got a little bit more time for people to try and get back to it to rebid. So there kind of is sniping if you place like your bids in the correct spots, I guess. Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, if we're looking at like with that mentality, yeah, yeah. I am saying um, I am glad that uh, Oxit is not taking like any cut of the proceeds and stuff. It so it is them. really cool that there is an auction site. You know, I don't want to talk bad about the app at all. Um, obviously, it's still it's in its infancy. It came out in like 2019 or somewhere around there, uh, but. I don't, I don't want to talk bad about it or make anyone think that I don't like it. I just, there's definitely things that need to be worked on. It's just it's bad and I don't like it. Is what yeah, it's yeah, yeah, essentially. Yeah. But no, it is yeah. cool that they, they partnered <laughs> with the Huntington's event and they do 100%. Like, they don't take any cut out of it. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, it's, it's cool that they allow charity to be charitable to the full extent. I do appreciate that. Uh, while we're still talking about Huntington's uh, a little bit, Obviously, neither Simi and I were there, but Brad does ask us, if you go over your experience with the Battle Royale, you played with Scott Porter, Simeon. Uh, and then I didn't play any Battle Royales, but then he asked some generic ones, like your experience overall, the best game, worst game, best team, worst team, best pick figure, worst pick figure. Oh, that's kind of like some Malcolm Rush question asking going on there, Brad. <laughs> it um, is. I'll allow <laughs> right. it. Uh, the best, uh, worst. Right. Yeah, Malcolm might send you a cease and desist for stealing his Yeah, he might be like, you have to format. get on my territory. What are you doing here? Um, uh, but go ahead and talk about like obviously your experience playing battle royales. This okay, weekend. so with those parameters. First question, obviously, uh, the battle royal with Scott Porter. I did a live version. It's on our YouTube channel now. Uh, I did a live. It was at nine a.m., so I didn't expect a whole lot of people to catch it. I don't know if anyone watched it live. I think there was a few viewers, yeah. but uh, it was pretty early. So that was Scott Porter, Scott Crampton, Spencer White, myself, and Brad Broyles. Um, going over the experience uh so i had been playing battle royals already and so had spencer white i don't think i well i should say with disney plus so even had scott the two scots that were live at huntington's event had they played battle royals they would not have been playing with the same stuff so me and Spencer were kind of old hats at this Disney Plus what to grab. So watching Scott Crampton pass the 195 Sorcerer Supreme to take the 100-point Super Air Vision was pretty funny. Uh, I definitely pointed that out and made fun of him a little bit for that. Um, but he, had, he was like, I didn't even look at it. Like, does it do anything good? And I was like, no, it's just a 13 for 5, 2 targets, sees through stealth, 8 range, can cross like half the map. I was like, it's pretty garbage. Um, it was a really fun battle royal. Uh, so we weren't taking it too seriously, I don't think. Uh, There's a lot of fun stuff that happened throughout it. I did the the trick with Baron Zemo, where he leap climbs, and on a battle royal map, that means you can go from one starting area to the edge of another starting area. So I had passed someone had passed to me two of the Gamora daughters of Thanos that have close combat expert exploit. So Baron Zemo just dropped right off two daughters of Thanos right in front of uh, Scott Porter's uh, starting area. That was my turn one. As everyone was passing, I I was going for blood already. Um, let's see. What was something else that happened that was fun? Oh, man. I like that. I like that a lot. My skinny Steve got completely blasted by a Sorcerer Supreme, like, turn one right after I moved Ooh. out. Uh I will say John Walker, that Sorcerer Supreme with his 11, I was like, yeah, well, John's got, he's got ESD plus the shield. He's a 21. You have to roll an actual attack roll. That's and, right, you know, baby. that 13, he only rolled like a six, so it missed. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, John Walker flurried one of the worst figures, and this kind of jumps ahead to worst figure, or, yeah, worst picked figure. The figure that sucked to get stuck with, 
I mean, really any figure sucks to get stuck with, but that super rare uh, watcher is 25 point oh, yeah. leadership. He can't fly. He can't carry. He's phasing and leadership and toughness with four clicks and one click is like regen. That's all he does in this format. He can't swap people out or anything. So that's literally the only thing he does. I don't think there's a worse figure because even like even like the other cheap figures around that range, like Skinny right. Steve gives you a leadership Steve and has better keywords. Has own uses, yeah. yeah, and it's within four. And he has like shield TA. You know, there's all those. I think he's got shield TA. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's all these other figures that are around the same point value that are better things to be stuck with than that. Um, no, it was, it was a fun battle royal. You can watch it. You might skip to like 10, 15 minutes in to see like the game actually start. Um, but yeah, it was pretty fun. Uh, I think Scott Porter knows what he's doing when he's playing. So it was pretty interesting. I think he was trying to get in my head. He was trying to convince me to go after strange Supreme. And had I gotten one more turn, I think I was going to KO two of his Monica Rambos. But, uh, yeah, I ended up winning by not a lot, by very few points. Uh, so it was fun. Uh, I pulled Captain John Walker, who killed a Watu and then was a flurry and beast. Almost killed a k- kid Loki, but I was like, oh, you know what? This map's perfect for leap climb. So I was just like, bop over here, kill Monica Rambo. And so I did that, and then I had to clear him so I couldn't... Nice go on my child murder spree that I was going to with him, but no, oh, that's a shame. good event. Um, overall, uh, so best game was with listener, uh, listeners, Luke, 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 and, uh, Bill. And then there's a third guy. I think his name was Zach coffee. Oh, so sure. I, yeah. I feel bad because, exactly. uh, we all have like a little bit of rapport built up and he, I, I don't know if he felt targeted or not. I hope not. But this was a game where I also did the Baron Mor- or Bar- Baron Zemo, jeez, the Baron Zemo um, double drag over to my opponent's starting area, turn one and drop off. So uh, Bill pulled Party Thor, and Ooh. I was like, "Oh, you know what I want to do? I'm going to lock down Party Thor. So if he decides to pulse wave, he has to hit his own team." Not yeah. realizing it was still first turn immunity. So I'm not sure if this is how it works, but Bill still had first turn immunity. The only action he took was pulse waving with Thor. I don't believe that uh, you can pulse wave your own friendly characters when they haven't moved out of their starting area with like first turn immunity. So hey, I... that's how I ruled it. I was like, well, didn't really rule it. We didn't ask a judge, but I was like, I'm pretty sure they're protected from pulse wave first turn immunity. And like it is his first turn. It hadn't gone around the table yet. Oh. So he was able to pulse wave my Baron, Zemo, and whoever else I drug up there. Uh, he ended up winning. Man, he just got some really solid rolls. He hit like a crit hit on somebody, and then I managed to hit his party Thor. I thought I could take his party Thor out in one turn, and I missed like two attacks, keeping me from KOing him. So his party Thor ended up on like the 11 for 3 with close combat expert click. So now he all of a sudden had a 50 point 12 for 4. Hey. Um, Luke pulled two... Well, Pulled one and got past a miss minutes. He might have been past both. No, I think he pulled one and then his last figure was, ended up being miss minutes. Uh, so he could have won my mission points potentially. Not really sure, but that was really funny seeing the miss minutes like bop around and probing stuff and in capping people. Um, yeah, but no, we split because of the map and just because of my bad tactics. We split that game down like the middle. So it was me versus Bill, Luke versus Zach. It was a pretty good game. I'm pretty sure his name was Zach. Um, if I'm, are you guys doing the weird battle royale rules, or are you doing when it's dead? It's so dead. they said early on that if everyone agreed, you could do the new battle royale world rules. Okay. But I never had any game where anyone decided to do that, um, or any, no one ever even brought it up after I was told that because I asked that as well. Uh, so that was right. my best game. Worst Jeez. game was when the first game that I played, where I was the fool that passed Sorcerer Supreme. Uh, mm-hmm. Not realizing that he was 195 points of like craziness. Uh, so this goes back to the Worlds 2019 when it was X Men Dark Phoenix Saga, and you had these colossals. So you had stuff like people pulling 300 point um, Dark Phoenix, 
and they implemented very quickly, or maybe on the offset, the highest point line that you could play a figure at was the 150, like keeping really busted stuff from being pulled and played like that. And I think that would have fixed the two figures that were really gross that I saw. So yeah, passing that strange was a bad game for me because that guy ended up getting two Sorcerer Supremes. Um, that was also the best team I saw. The worst team might have been the double Miss Minutes team that Luke had, but yeah. it was also one of the funnest. Uh, best picked figure was the guy who pulled uh, Prime Vision, and Prime Vision has a 200 point line, and we allowed him to play it at the 200 point line, and that figure is just impossible to KO because uh, I think it's like 10 clicks long, Invincible that's unoutwittable, Super Senses that's unoutwittable. Um, it's got shape change, phasing, outwit, flurry after it phases. Uh, he was also handed a Mobius, so even though he didn't realize he could have done it, he could have first turn gotten three attacks off with Vision, so that Ooh. would have been really gross. So yeah, that was probably easily, I think, the best figure in this sealed format. I don't think... It might also be the highest point figure in the set. Uh, actually, I, I'm pretty sure it is. Strange Supreme's the only thing close, and this guy just, he would tear right through Strange Supreme. So, yeah, that's got to be the best figure. Um, and then worst picked figure, I mean, I already said, like, that getting stuck with that Super Uatu, I saw that happen twice, and it's just, it's dead weight. It doesn't do anything. You could body block with it or potentially get a leadership, but the only keyword's cosmic, so you also need a cosmic character on your team. Yeah, so that was probably the worst picked figure. Um, my overall record was one and seven, technically. Or no, one and six. One win, six oh. losses. Um, I played seven games. So obviously the the game with uh, Scott, there was no prizing on the line for that one, so I didn't have to worry about that one, but that was the only one I won. Uh, I got second order. probably two or three times, but second you know if you're not first you're last this year so last year it was first and second got scott porter pogs this year it was yeah. just first so i never walked away with a spirit of the game pog not super upset about it i will say i, I also didn't play my last four uh battle royals so i paid for 10 altogether and i only got to play in six although like the seventh technically donated to donated to me from brad he uh, sponsored us and scott crampton and spencer for that one so i technically played in seven but i had four games left when i ended the day uh didn't play at all on sunday after that scott porter one i just had a lot of stuff going on so that was yeah. a little sad but you know i have six team up cards coming my way so you know oh. Baby. We'll see what they decide to send me, what randomness they will send me. Uh, I'm seeing some a, a legacy Wonder Woman, and I'm seeing a uh, let's see what other team up might I get? Oh, uh, the set that's going to rotate some JLU team ups. Like oh, perhaps the uh, the Flash NB. and Martian Manhunter team up card. <laughs> no, I have no clue. Uh, it was a fun experience. I definitely do it again. Um, I will say the prizing in person was way better than online. I, and also, I, I don't know if I should say this, this might be a little insider knowledge, but, uh, next year, if I can't make it in person, if I'm not doing the person and I do the online thing again, I'll literally just pay 40 bucks to have three people sit in a battle royale with me and just chat for like an hour and then when they call time I'll be like yeah I won send me the pog please <laughs> cuz you can do that you can just pay $40 to get game? it essentially uh without I mean you could play the game too I guess but uh yeah that's something I thinking about it I was like oh I spent $100 and got no spirit of the game some people paid $40 and got at least one spirit of the game I'm a fool I know that was some real billion clicks blues like line of thinking you just say shit. Yeah. It's not even it's not an original line of thinking though. That's no, it's not. like so uh I mean, some teams from saying, like the, the Philippines like, and rather, stuff. 
Oh, did also it? did that. Did, did they do that? Okay. Well, I, I can't I say that like, they did. They just sat there. I think they played the, the games. Where it's like, I'll but, just buy my opponents and take the prizing. It's a very Billy and Clicks Bruce thing to do. Uh, yeah. Sorry for well, reading into yeah, it. If I bought way, your entry but, and you played, I'd be like, no, if Calder wins, I get it. Well, no, I've done that before, too. Yeah. Like, I paid for other people to play. No, no, I got you. I understand. I get it. I'm but just it saying, I'm calling a spade a spade, Simeon, all right? Yeah. I ain't afraid to call a spade a spade. Just saying. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I really have anything. So yeah, the only thing I would have changed about the online battle Royals or the battle Royals for Disney plus would have been that 150 point cap that they did at worlds in 2019. I think that should, especially in this set, but I think in most sets, that's a good call, but especially in this set where the vast majority of figures pulled aren't even hitting the hundred point line. We don't need. 195 point and 200 point oh, figures bopping around not that was the same problem we ran into when we like just a group of buddies at gen con decided that hey we're gonna play some future foundation sealed well future foundation you know it's got a lot of low point figures but then it's got 150 point doom chases and then worst of all uh our key of death for 200 for 200 points. yeah would absolutely destroy every table he's at even at 60 he's already great and that player already won that battle royal at 60 points we were like yeah dang we really can't like marquee of death at 200 is just oppressive in a future foundation battle royale when someone's got like Artie and franklin on their team you know like right not great balance. I've got a battle royale mind wise. control. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's not really good, man. It was like, yeah, we made that call. We were like, yeah, dude, yeah. sorry, you're gonna have to play him at sixty. You could Still easily won. pull some like just real bad garbage teams. Like one time, I pulled a Sylvie. I can't remember what else made it to the team, but it was like all commons you mean and uncommons. Admitting that Sylvie is bad. Or well, you? no moving attack makes her rough. Now, I yeah. will say I had one shot to win with her where uh, if I had hit the mind control. So I did do the double mind control thing. I had one shot where had I taken control of or had my opponent not moved his super rare winter soldier, I could have taken uh, winter soldier out in one turn, but oh. it just didn't come through. So there was a few games where it was like really close. Again, like I said, I think I got third or second, like thir- three times. I don't remember doesn't really matter because second's just as good as last in this format. But, yeah, there's some bad figures in this True. set. There's some figures that do not lean into uh, Battle Royale mode at whatsoever. So I will say I give Battle Royale for Disney Plus a 6 out of 10. It's not my favorite set for it. Oh, okay. Same as, like, so Rebirth would have been, like, a 4 out of 10 because... You get a chase from Rebirth compared to like actual your garbage common, royale. yeah, your so common bad. Nightwing or something, uh, or like even you know super rare uh, Superman in like the Rebirth. He just like flies around wrecking stuff. ABPI, yeah. that was like an eight out of ten, nine out of ten, because you could pull a rare cat, that was awesome. a rare name. That was really awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was a great set for any kind of sealed because the really rares good. were balanced. It was. So if you pulled bad, you still had a chance. Very true. Dang, that was such a good set for, for Battle Royales. Oh, my gosh. And just sealed in general. Yeah. ABPI. You know, ABPI is just a good set. I don't yeah, think anyone can turns argue out, that. Retrospectively, it just maybe we were too hard on that set when it came out. No, maybe. We, we weren't. I don't, I we think loved we, that set when it came we out. We loved that set when it came out. I don't think we ever said anything bad about that set when it came out. Anyways, moving on here, uh, let's go ahead, go through some listener questions to wrap up the show. There are dozens of us. Dozens! We're basically already kind of answering listener questions, but uh, we just have a, a handful more to talk about here. Eroy Jack asks, if you could teach any person to play Hero Clicks, who would it be and how long before they could beat you? Uh, if I could choose anyone... Learn to play hero clicks. That is such, such a good question. Obviously, friends and family come to mind. If they would actually sit down and listen to me and try to learn, play the game. That would be nice. But uh, I think it'd be really fun to play hero clicks with Nicolas Cage. I think, and I think it would take him no time at all to beat me. Um, <laughs> when I play hero clicks, so like just this last week, I don't know if I told this on the podcast or not. We had a new player at the venue, and I sit down to go play against him. 
and our judge is like, hey, go easy on him. He's new. Uh, apparently, when I hear go easy, it means, well, let him win. Uh, so I, uh, I, I, like, I played so bad, and there was like a point in the game where I was like, oh, wait. I'm not going to be able to win this game, am I? And I was like, oh, well, that's all right. But, like, I guess whoever I teach how to play, and even when I was first getting into Hero Clicks, uh, when I tried to teach other people to, like, play, when I was, like, new at it, if they just chose better figures, you know, because you're just kind of playing stats only, if you just kind of choose figures that just have better stats, then they would just win. So I don't think it's honestly that big of a deal how long would it take them to beat you. Now, how long would it take them to beat me in, like, a both trying our hardest 300 modern match or whatever. I don't know. I don't know how long Nicholas cage. Probably still instantly though. Probably still instantly. He's just so good at everything he does. Yeah. Like, that's who I would choose. That's who I would choose to, to play, teach how to play hero clicks. Fair also enough. means I just get to talk to Nicholas cage. Yeah. Or have him like scream at you. Yeah. Finally returning all my many, many calls. He could play uh, to what the the bat or not Batman the the Superman reborn the okay death of or Superman. just maybe uh, Ghost Rider how's how's that oh, Simeon maybe no, you just play Ghost Rider because he got to play Ghost Rider he never got to be Superman on oh the true. true he, he never was actually slated to I think he tested out the costume yeah he tried the costume on and everything yeah um man teach someone how to play Hero Clicks how long would it take them to beat me. I'll say the the new owner of Dial H. I'd teach um, Elon Musk oh, yeah. how to play Heroclix. Okay. And uh, he would always oh. overthink it and have to rely on other people's builds to beat me. So if he ever could beat right. me, he would have to rely on what someone else did. He wouldn't be able to build on his own ever. But Obviously. using someone else's better build, maybe... You're saying Elon Musk and Scott Crampton are the same person? <laughs> Is this what I'm hearing right now? Are they the exact same person? You just don't know it yet? Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> Definitely not the same person. You, you know who, uh, one only you know who almost actually, went bald. One actually is bald. Is bald. Yeah. yeah. True. True. But uh, no. Uh, you know who else would be fun? Like, N. Shapiro. Well, you see, actually, you can't do that. Because my gosh. figure here says he would instantly become like a rules lawyer. You know? Like, uh, Yeah, we already have. People Man. actually, I guess like we actually have plenty of people like that and already. That but it the, would be that funny. That sounds like the worst thing that. I could ever sit across from. Yeah. Like, oh, I will so say it would not take him long to him. get good at it because, like you said, <laughs> no, super rules. No, lore. He, would, he, he would might say something do. silly like, "Well, technically, Surter doesn't have a line for his twenty-five point value, so technically, <laughs> I should be able to play him at his top click." Correct. Yes. And then yes. you would say. No, Ben. That's not how things work. No. That's not how anything ever works. You have to understand nuance, and you don't. You fool. Uh, Yeah, that sounds like a nightmare, actually. That sounds like a legitimate nightmare. uh, I bet he'd be the kind of person that if you were playing, like, I don't know, something random, like Many Faces of Doom, and he won the role, he'd probably be like, so what can I do to screw your team over? You know, he'd probably (laughs) say something like that. Kind of beginning of Game Effects, can I... Get you kind to of being good effects too. I rob you. Wow. All right, that's yeah, enough. Yeah, of that. that does sound that's like fun, a Ben though. Shapiro thing, right? Um, yeah. Uh, his own Bill says, "How do you feel when you drive ten hours or more to a tournament and then end up playing against a person from your local venue or one of your practice partners? The odds of that happening to Calder twice in five games is crazy. Would you prefer not to because one of you is going to hand the other the loss? So I, um, right, Bill, that is something that happened to me. The odds are pretty crazy." Uh, I would prefer if I ever go to a tournament, I either play against people I've never played against before, which, to be fair, was my other games. All my other games were people who I'd never played against before, which is awesome. Uh, like, that's what I would obviously prefer, you know, meet some new people, play. But still, though, the games that you play with your buddies in high-level competitive can sometimes be some of the most fun games. Like, Grant and I just played a super stupid, fun, quick game. And so, you know, I'm grateful we got to play that game. Even though I've played against Grant plenty of times, local venue, or played against Matt plenty of times practicing, it was still just as fun to play against them in the actual tournament. So I don't totally hate it when I have to drive 10 hours to a tournament. I I would maybe hate driving 10 hours uh, and I have to play against, like, Lucas and Isaac. 
Yeah. That would kind of suck. Then I'd be like, dang, it's a tough say, game and it's a 10 hour drive. And I already have to play against tough games <laughs> against these guys. Then so, it's not as fun. I don't, I don't typically travel with it. Like my, most people in my area are casual and don't go to like larger tournaments. Um, yeah. So the only time I would have to like play somebody that I normally play is somebody from like South Dakota that normally comes to like the tournaments I go to as well. But yeah, I can't imagine like playing with Lucas every tournament and then you're finally or like every uh friday i guess he judges does he play with you when he judges he plays he plays. okay so i can't imagine like playing with lucas like all the time and then i'm like doing well at a tournament because that's the only way i'd ever play against lucas at a tournament is like i'm in the top couple like rows of swiss so i'm doing really well at a tournament and then i have to sit across from lucas and i'm just like ah, oh, well i might still make the top cut Maybe. i still have a chance it's, it's, it is a little bit of a dampener you're like oh well yeah, it's true. I think my record against Lucas is like, including like sealed and stuff, because I, I can't distinguish the two. Uh, it's got to be like four wins and like 16 losses or something. But no, I, I always enjoy playing against Kevin, even if we like, Oh, yeah, it's always somewhere. fun playing uh, against Kevin. That's always great. Yeah. And I'm not saying I don't enjoy playing against Lucas. I just know uh, I'm I hate likely to Lucas. lose. That guy sucks. Like, when I played against him, when we played against that team in Worlds in 2019, and he had 300 point juggernaut, I was like, "Cool." Uh, so yeah. I lose. I was tough. Good. I didn't want to win this game. I'm glad you can play one 300 point figure in a sealed environment. Great yeah. for me. Uh, this is not so knocking epic. the guy who played All Father. I mean, I'm sure you tried very hard and got so far. Okay. Um, in the end, it didn't really matter. There it is, and you're going with it, and still, it happened. <laughs> no. So I, I don't uh, have all that right. question doesn't pertain uh, we're to gonna, That's Yeah, answer. we're going to move on to the next question, shall we? Uh, Chance McCall asks, what are your top five most influential games in your life? I think he must be specifying video games. I don't know if, Simi, if you prepared for this question or not at all, but uh, I do. I do have the top five most influential video games in my life. They, they are pseudo I rank and I think importance to me. Uh, so number five doesn't mean it's least important, but it just it was the one that made the list. But I could swap it out for other ones. Uh, but Marvel versus Capcom three, big one for okay. me. Awesome fighting game. Marvel versus Capcom. Thanks to Marvel versus Capcom, it's what got me into Mega Man X, and then it also got me into Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney series. Uh, so that's another big reason I'm thankful for the Marvel vs. Capcom, because then I also love those game series as well. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, number four, the OG Lego Star Wars. The original trilogy Lego Star Wars is, to me, an iconic game. Obviously, Skywalker Saga just came out. I haven't played that yet. I don't even know if I honestly will. Um, but the original Lego Star Wars, there's some beautiful simplicity about that game no voice acting uh the humor in it's really funny it's very iconic i feel like you've really experienced something if you've played through like the first two lego star wars games lego indiana jones and like the first lego batman game i feel like those lego games where there's no voice acting is that type of humor and that different level design before it got a little too crazy you know and i just like totally turned me off from them after that um, but those Lego games, I think, are just like, iconic in their own way. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, they don't make three bad Lego games. They don't make bad Lego games, but like you couldn't even, make me play even Lego the old Harry PC Potter game like... Lego City before they had oh, like right? properties yeah. out the wazoo was a very solid game for the day. True. Or you know when you're like delivering pizza or like yeah. random weird stuff. Stealing yeah, the Lego games are all other Lego stealing people. vehicles, dude. Uh, it's pretty gnarly. Uh, number two, speaking of stealing vehicles, uh, no, I'm sorry, number three is Jack 2. Jack and Daxter series. I love the Jack and Daxter series. Uh, Jack 1 is like an okay game. It gets you like into the series. Uh, but Jack 2 is where it's at. Jack 2 is definitely the best one out of Daxter, Jack and Daxter, Jack 2, Jack 3, and uh, Jack X Racing. And we don't talk about the quote unquote fourth Jack game that doesn't exist in my opinion. Is that the one Frontier. where he's a werewolf or something? Uh, n yes, no, I don't remember. <laughs> like it's where Dexter like... is a werewolf. Okay, he doesn't turn into a werewolf. He never I turns into Jack, a werewolf. Like 
transformed Jack, into some Jack monster. transforms into like evil Jack, dark Jack, and like okay. light Jack. Those are like the sure. two Jacks you can turn. That's into. always yeah. Sure. You always know games have not outlived their lifespan when they start doing that. No, 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 no. Uh, in Jack Two, when he can turn into Dark Jack, it's just the best. Like, Jack One is like an okay, like Iro type, kind of lame PS2 era, like early game. But like Jack Two, when you're in Haven City and you're killing metalheads, and you've got like the guns with all the different attachments, and you can go into Dark Jack mode. It's pretty dope. Now, Simeon's reference to Sonic when he turns into a werewolf, yes, that is uh. bad. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but this is actually good, and Jack 3 is also a solid game. But Jack 2 is just an awesome game. Love the Jack series. It's what made me, like, uh, you know, love Naughty Dog. And then, you know, of course, Last of Us 2 came out, which then made me hate Naughty Dog. So perfectly balanced as all things should be. <laughs> uh, and uh, number two, it's kind of tied, but Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, it's really hard to pick for me. I've played both of them a lot. I think replayability-wise, if I don't want to have to, like a sweaty gamer and be like all right time to do the perfect kick flippy dippy whippy whatever headshot you know then i'd rather just play doom 2016 but doom eternal for like gameplay wise and it being really 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 difficult to understand the combat cycle sure but doom 2016 for like cool storytelling cool atmosphere interesting gameplay obviously a lot of stuff is better in streamlined and internal but doom 2016 and internal uh, and then of course number one to, to no one's surprise if they I've listened to the show before. Uh, it's Team Fortress 2. Uh, okay. TF2 yeah. is hugely influential on what I say every day, like quotes I make, uh, parts of my life. So just really quick, run down the list again. But like seriously, TF2, if you haven't played it, you know, now's not the greatest time to play it, but it's probably never going to get better. So it's free, downloaded on Steam. They got bots in the game now that are super annoying. But uh, Man vs. Machine is still Man vs. Machine. That's what I love the most about TF2. I would honestly love to get like Simeon and like four or five other uh, Simeon and I, and then four other people to like be like a man versus machine crew on a, uh, on team fortress two. I think that would honestly be tons of fun. Simeon, Bill, Luke, uh, I take Alex, Devin, any, anybody, Matt would be cool. Basically any of our patrons, any of our friends, <laughs> I would, I would love to play like Anyone a full plays, squad. Yeah. Basically anybody I can force to play this game. That's that's what I would love to play like a full team of man versus machine with. I'm with going you guys. completely it would blind actually be though. Fun. If we do that, I'm not going to learn the controls beforehand. Oh, it's just so WASD, I'm a buddy. Detriment it's, to your whole team. Uh, it's okay. You're always a detriment to the team, Simeon. No matter <laughs> Thank what. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So real quick, it was Marvel vs. Capcom three, OG Lego Star Wars, Jack two, Doom Eternal slash Doom 2016, and Team Fortress two for the five most influential games in my life. Simeon, do you um, have? So if we're speaking just video games, I'll go over just the video game ones, and then I'll slip in the two uh, non-video game games that... uh, Actually, there's three. So number five, man, I think number five would have to be the original Red Dead Redemption. Okay, uh, yeah. Red Dead to Redemption 1. Um, that That was a game I put a ton of time into, and it's like one of those games where you like kind of really start to understand at least for me that game like video games can be like an art form like so yeah they're telling you a story yeah there's some like visual art there's some audio that's like you know artistic there's a lot of like art stuff but video games themselves when everything is combined like a movie or like any other kind of medium is like a true art form and that was one of those games where you know when you're first riding into mexico and like the camera pans out and like that music really hits. That's like a really magical like moment. Cause like you, you've got nowhere to go. You're like out in the desert following this path. And so it's just, I think every player that played it, it pretty much plays the exact same. There's not a lot to do other than just keep riding the horse, Um, but you're still in control. And so it's cool. It's a cool little moment. Uh, Number four uh, would have to be XCOM. And this could be like okay. any of the XCOM games other huh. than Enemy Known or whatever the 1941 ones was, because that one was slightly different. But it's one of the only grid-based, turn-based video games that I've ever played and actually truly enjoyed. Um, the way they do turn-based, the way they do like the action, like total kind of like Hero Clicks like version. It's one of the th- games that's closest to Hero Clicks for a video game that like plays the most similar uh 
and so yeah it's it's definitely a game i could like keep going back to and it's one of those games that just made me appreciate a completely different style because i used to be like gears of war um you know like halo those kind of games used to be like the first person shooter or third person shooter but xcom was like the first time where i actually really had to invoke like strategy and squad mechanic kind of stuff and so that's that's one for sure uh number three to go in the opposite direction uh kill zone (laughs) three so um when kill zone three first came out or when when i first got a ps3 so back in like 2010 I was a little bit late on the jump for a PS3, I think like a year behind. But I, when I first got a PS3, the only game that I had was Killzone 3. And it's a PlayStation exclusive, so the online was not as good as uh, like Halo. You didn't have like as big a lobby as, as Halo or anything like that. But man, realizing how much time and effort you could sink into a game to try and get better at it, try and like max out different classes and get all these unlocks and stuff just for like a year later for it to be like overshadowed by literally anything else or for the player base to completely drop off and like all of your accomplishments completely gone is also the first and only time I joined a clan in any kind of like game like that. Whoa. Yeah. So I was Simi, actually you're a member of the clan, a clan. Uh, oh, I don't no idea what it would have been called. The kill zone three clans. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, no idea what it would have been called at this what point. What do you do? Just do, like, raids? I didn't know that game had... Oh, it's raid. it's first-person shooter, so it's just, like... Oh, death like Call of Duty ones. All right, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, Killzone 3 was essentially the PlayStation version of Halo, but I will say, much better story. Like, Halo's great, like, space, drama, opera, blah, blah, blah. It's too fanciful. Like, too much random junk in Halo... Where they're just like, oh, uh, zombies, because uh, the alien that uh, turns people into zombies. Like, it just makes sense. Um, and I, that's entirely said to make anyone that's a huge fan of Halo mad. Because I do truly think that Killzone has a better story. Killzone is just a more realistic story. Uh, there's the Hellgast. I can't remember. They're the bad guys with like the red eyes and the gas masks. Uh, their planet essentially became this bad place because they over polluted it or whatever and then there's the uh unsc so i don't know the united united corporations of planets or they're like the good guys mm-hmm. that always have blue all over yeah their outfits. Uh, but no the, the actual storyline was just a lot more interesting because it was essentially it's kind of like the the kree scroll situation where the hell gas needed a new planet or needed new planets to move to because theirs had become unlivable. And this other place was like, you can't just come and take our stuff. And so that's like the whole, but the uh, political theater wise, interesting story. Um, I would swap. I will say hot take. Their costumes are way cooler. Oh, their armor is way cooler. Absolutely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It gives you a very Wolfenstein kind of vibe at times where obviously the bad guys are like designed to look reminiscent of a certain uh nazi party maybe from like the 1940s uh not to name names but uh yeah a lot of hugo boss kind of aesthetics going on for the hellgast uh if i could swap kill zone 3 out with a game it would be crack the case which is a game i played by myself a lot as a kid but it was just oh dude really yeah I, i wow okay interesting crack the case yeah so essentially there's a yeah like i never timed myself or scored myself or anything but essentially it gives you a very brief description and you have to use reasoning and stuff to try and figure out what happened so you're like you know man found laying unconscious next to a coffee cup the coffee cup has a single cat print in it and like a picture hangs askew on like the window and you could ask questions and stuff if you were playing with multiple people obviously um but it was fun. You just try and like deduct what happened via usually yes or no questions. Uh, try and narrow stuff down. You could get a couple clues and random stuff. But to quote unquote crack the case, you had to uh, have like three pieces of information. And it wasn't always the same. Sometimes it was like you had to know the motive. Sometimes it was like you had to know uh, 
uh, how like the person got in, you know, you, like you had to know three different things and they weren't always the same, but you didn't always know, or you never knew what it was specifically that you needed to know. Right. So you like opened it up or whatever. Right. So that was like, that's the alternate for number three. Uh, number two, I'm going to have to say Ocarina of Time because mm. that was like one of the first big quote unquote big for like N64 sandboxes. Yeah. Seems big. It's really not, but it seems big at the time. Uh, one of the, yeah, just one of the, like the best fantasy games ever. There's time travel. There's the sages. There's, it's one of those games where you think you get to the end and then you're only at the halfway point. Like when you grab all the sage stones or whatever, and then you that realize is true. I've right. only gotten to the halfway point. Now I have to get the Triforce. And so it's just like one of those moments where as a kid, you're like, whoa, so much more to the game. So, yeah, that one for sure. Man, if I was going to say. I'm not going to lie. If I had to pick a Nintendo game, that would be it. Oh, Nintendo yeah. not as influential to me as a lot of and other people. And I'm not people, even a like, huge. Dang, I did forget about Ocarina of Time. That game I'm not is not even a, a huge uh, Zelda fan, like a Legend of Zelda fan. Yeah. Um, I've played probably four Legend of Zelda games over the years. They're all good. Like I haven't played Breath of the Wild, but I'm, you know, I'm not like super invested in the story. It's just a really cool environment and really decent gameplay usually. Uh, number one has to be Shadow the Hedgehog for GameCube. Um, man, when you talk about just a beautiful story being told by you know Why are you lying one of the to most right broken now? characters that has ever Why been created. Are you Why are you lying uh, right now? Like no character has ever spoken to me on such a deep level as Shadow the Hedgehog. When he said, I'm gonna murk you guys, like I felt that. When he when he went super shadow mode and started flying across the screen, like that was me, you know, as a kid. Like I I would go super shadow mode sometimes and just fly. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it. Why? I was uh, like, what is, what is this? Such a bad game. God, you are putting up right now. For what reason? For what reason do you lie to people like this, Simeon? No, uh, the final game I'll say is uh, I'll have to go with Chrono Trigger. So Chrono Trigger was like Dang. the first game That's I ever played one. that had multiple endings. And this was before you could just Google. I didn't find out Chrono Trigger had multiple endings until I think I got a copy of Game Informer that mentioned it. And I was like, what? And then I went back and I played it again and realized a lot of stuff changes depending on what you do. Like, uh, like not just the ending. It's not just like Mass Effect 3 where it's color shaded. Literally, you might have a completely like different half of the game depending on what you do in the first half. Like, a lot of stuff goes wacky. Um, so that one's, yeah. That one was really cool. Uh, influenced me a lot just with like the random choices and stuff. Um, obviously games that have like the, whatever the, the good, bad meter, like fable are like built off of like that original chrono multiple ending kind of thing. Cause fable and fable two were also really big influences in my life. Those are really fun games that I sunk way too much time into. Uh, and then if I were to swap out two and one, um, one obviously would have to go to hero clicks that's uh like i i make a podcast and i i edit and do videos and uh spend honestly a lot of time playing this game so i'd be lying if i said it hadn't influenced me or hadn't been influential oh, in you're life. right you're right um and then two would be D D 3.5 like a true like that video games will never be able to completely get like the kind of role playing that you can get out of a lot actual like D and D game, the actual, like you and one other person, like talking back and forth, your DM trying to come up with stuff on the fly because you kind of like threw him for a loop or whatever, that kind of thing. Um, that's like the truest form of like role play. And it's just really hard to like make a game that's even close yeah. now games can be way more fun than D, &D sometimes because you don't have to go through all the rigor moral and the work and all that stuff uh and you don't have to schedule it and all those things but as far as like you know the first time i played D, &D and someone was like i'm gonna spit in this guard's face and i was like you can do that what <laughs> like there's no there's no point in the book where it says you can spit in their face yeah. But yeah, yeah, like, you know, roll for intimidation. Kind of, kind of world's your oyster type deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
Literally just whatever. Quite, quite exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, dang, Simeon's got a, uh, a cool thing going on here with board games. I, obviously, Hero Clicks has to be one. I don't think I could put D&D on there, though, because I haven't played that much D&D. But, like, D&D is super fun. And I would, I would I don't know specifically D&D, but I would say almost any role-playing game uh, kind of deserves that spot. It just ends up being, usually D&D is, like, the most popular. But uh, probably the most fun I had in, in any role-playing game was playing a, a set of Call of Cthulhu. That was really sweet. Probably just because we were being wacky about it. That was pretty much it. It just It's yeah. all about, like, any role-playing game is just how much fun you have. Like... Like we like what yeah. you all just came to the conclusion. You can spit in his face. It's like yeah, yeah, you can. You can. You can do all sorts of stuff. You well, don't just have to not, be like. It's not always about winning. Like obviously there is a no. goal, uh, but like in D anD D, like your goal is so. Unless you do like one of those big campaigns where it's like the Elder God is coming back, you must defeat Baphomet or whatever. Um, yeah. If you're not doing one of those like big campaigns where it's all about that stuff, your goal might just be like, this dude has a bunch of like product he wants you to like guard on this trip to, you know, the other side of the continent. Um, and so it could be something like super simple where maybe you don't complete your task. Maybe you completely fail, but it's super fun failing anyhow. Oh yeah. Hey guys, that was a really long episode of a hero clicks podcast. <laughs> uh, if you want, we trying to get these videos out as soon as we can, guys, there's a lot, of awesome YouTube videos coming out soon on Dialy for Heroes. So you should absolutely subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, get ready for notifications and stuff. Simeon has his unboxings he needs to, you know, get uploaded. I've got uh travel vlog. I don't know if that's gonna be uploaded. Who knows? But we're gonna try to get that edited up here in this next week. We'll see what happens. Um all of our Disney Plus gameplay is still gonna be uploaded. Uh we're gonna try to get that out like fast as we can. But you know also we're sprinkling it so you're getting a little taste of Disney Plus to keep holding you guys over until it gets released finally in June. I know we, we're chomping at the bit for Disney Plus. I know, guys. Um, so, but yeah, we are our second gameplay video will be this next week. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good one. It's it's a, it's a good gameplay video, I, I imagine. At least I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think this it's game Austin two game. that's going to come out. I think game two is, is pretty gnarly. I will say... Uh, Game two is one of the quicker games, but game is three pretty fast. will be a more interesting. Uh, game three, game is three like, and four, yeah, yeah, those ones are definitely like some Battle of the Five Armies type stretched out hero clicks, like ups and downs and twists and turns and oh no, what's going to happen type like games. Especially the last game. Last game is a real nail biter, edge of the seat, everything going on there. Oh yeah, so. Yeah, so subscribe to the YouTube channel for all that stuff, guys. Obviously, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter for more updates about the world of Hero Clicks and about the podcast and everything. If you liked the show and want to support us, guys, you can do so by joining Patreon. I made all of the... I didn't make them. Luke made them, but I've got them printed off now and on action tokens, all the cool tokens for Disney+. Plus. So if you wanted to, you know, join the Patreon this month, uh, then you'll be able to get those tokens when Disney Plus comes out. That's like your Spider-Man bystanders, your Red Wing bystander, uh, your Senior Scratchy bystander, all that stuff you'll be able to get. And plus like food tokens, um, fun little tokens like that, that, you know, characters get a blank token. Uh, Zombie Cap gets a food token. You put out loot light objects for Nebula. Those are That is also a token you can put out. It's kind of fun stuff like that is also in the mix. Um, so yeah, definitely join the Patreon if you want those tokens. If you want really fun stickers and stuff like that, you join the Patreon. And like Simi and I said, we have an awesome Discord community. Uh, definitely join the Patreon. If nothing else, at least join for a dollar just to be able to use our Discord because it is super duper fun. That is all the stuff I want to shout out. Thank you for listening. And now Simeon is going to struggle to find a segue yeah. <laughs> for the cool thing. <laughs> if all this out. Disney Plus and other random video game talk got you really, uh, really hoping for some Disney Plus, let's see. Let's uh, let me go to my browser real quick and uh, type in uh, C, and that oh, instantly pulls up CoolStuffInc.com. So CoolStuffInc.com currently has Disney Plus for pre-order. Uh, you can get Brixes, Brixes, cases, <laughs> the plural of bricks. Uh, 
You can get bricks. You can get cases. Uh, right now, their bricks are for $140. Use code DIAL5 to get 5% off. Uh, you can get those Dyson token packs, those uh, starter kits, those play-at-home kits, uh, single boosters. Uh, when it comes out, they'll have the yeah all the single figures. So check them out. Uh, CoolStuffInc.com where they've got all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Like always, happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional Heroclix. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six how do people humor? think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which Absolute fools, it's not richer nonsense. I'm gonna make your clips like that forever. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. 